So hey guys. This is your favorite the fanfic club. So in this video. We will see what if Naruto was a lichen ninja and gained the werewolf abilities. Summary says. Naruto's father was a werewolf. What happens when his own werewolf abilities finally start to surface? Naruto harem, Aruka harem. When I say Aruka harem I mean he gets the women that are a lot older than Naruto. But before we start, remember to subscribe and like this video. Now let's start. Naruto groaned, he felt like he had just been hit with a truck. Stupid Orochimaru. What the fuck did he do to me? Hey wait a minute, where am I? Asked Naruto. Naruto was in some type of, well sewer was the best way he could think to describe it. There was ankle high water and he could swear he could hear arguing of some kind. Curiosity getting the better of him he started to follow the sound until he was blinded by a shining light. When it finally cleared Naruto was greeted with a rather peculiar sight. A wolf with silver fur was having a heated argument with a giant, monster behind some type of cage. And that's why I'm cutting off your chakra from him, I won't let you corrupt him, shouted the wolf. I'd love to see you try and stop me. Hey! What the heck is going on here? shouted Naruto. The wolf blinked in confusion as she turned her head to see the blonde. Oh! Naruto, I didn't expect to see you so soon, said the wolf. Who the hell are you? And what the heck is that thing? asked Naruto. Insolent whelp. Do you know who you address? I am mighty Kyubi. The mightiest of all the tailed demons. Quiet you! shouted the wolf. The wolf kicked one of the Kyubi's bars with one of her hind legs. Don't you ever talk to Naruto, you're to blame for everything, shouted the wolf. Naruto was surprised to say the least. The wolf was obviously female and yet she seemed almost protective of Naruto. She turned to Naruto and he almost flinched with how fast she did it. Naruto, come with me there is much to discuss, said the wolf. Only if you agree to tell me what the heck is going on, said Naruto. The wolf nodded to him. I'll tell you everything, said the wolf. Okay then, said Naruto. As Naruto and the wolf started to leave together silver bars appeared between the already present cage bars. The most noticeable feature about these bars was the fact that they had crescent moon marks on them. Hey! What the fuck is this? Hey! It's trapping my chakra! Hey! Get your asses back here! shouted the Kyubi. The wolf smiled smugly as she heard the Kyubi's rant. As Naruto and his companion continued their walk he couldn't help but admire her fur. It was so silver it almost hurt his eyes to look at it. So who or what are you? asked Naruto. Well Naruto, I guess you could think of me as your spirit guide. Do you know what you are? asked the wolf. I'm a ninja. Believe it, said Naruto. No, well I mean yes technically you are a Konoha ninja but you're more than that, said the wolf. Huh? What do you mean? asked Naruto. The wolf and Naruto stopped walking. This way Naruto, said the wolf. She turned down a corner and entered a dark room. Come Naruto, there is much to learn, she said. Naruto shrugged and entered the room. A picture of the Yandaimi appeared next to her. Naruto, do you know who this is? That's the fourth Hokage, said Naruto. Yes, but he was more than that. He was a werewolf of the strongest breed but he was also your father. Naruto stared at her for a moment with a blank expression. What? Now Naruto, I know what you're thinking but your father loved you very much. He couldn't bring himself to ask any of the other families of Konoha so he sealed the Baka demon in you. It tore him up inside knowing that it would have to be his own son burdened with such a fate. Naruto's eyes were hidden by the shadows of his bangs so it was nearly impossible to tell his emotion. The only thing he ever wanted was for you to be recognized as the hero you are. Naruto. I know that it might be possible that you hate him very much. I don't. What? That was one answer she truly wasn't expecting. Naruto looked at her with a confident smirk she had seen one too many times on his father's face. If I was the old man I probably would have done the exact same thing. I don't have any grudges against him so I'll do him proud and grant his final wish. I'll make the village see me for the hero that I am even if it takes to the day I die, I swear it, said Naruto. A smirk started to develop on her face. And I never go back on my word that's my nindo, my ninja way, believe it. Hey. You are your father's son alright, there's no mistaking that. You have the same confidence and arrogance he always showed. 
Naruto rubbed the back of his neck slightly embarrassed in how much he was presumably like his father. Well, let's move on. What's this about him being a werewolf? asked Naruto. Yes. He was a very rare type of werewolf. He had silver fur and was undefeated when it came to fighting in his hybrid form. If his fur was silver then how come he was a blonde? asked Naruto. Oh uh, well you see hair color kind of changes when one changes into their hybrid form. Well I guess I can swallow that. Okay, new question. If he was a werewolf how come no one ever knew? asked Naruto. Werewolves are kind of looked down upon in societies as monsters. They would have grabbed any silver weapons they could find without so much as batting an eye. Which brings us to why you haven't ever changed before. Yeah, what's up with that? asked Naruto. Before your father died he summoned me and how should I say this, called in a favor. He asked me to lock away all your like and abilities, features and powers until I saw fit that you were ready to both handle them and hide them. You have enough trouble with the villagers as it is. Well can't argue with you there, so you think I'm ready for them? asked Naruto. With a little help from me, but let's take things slow first. You have to learn to walk before you can run. But the one thing you must always remember is that you must keep the fact that you're a werewolf a secret, otherwise the residents of Konoha. Hold it. Say no more, please just don't go there, they treat me bad enough already, said Naruto. Exactly. But know that being a werewolf does not make you a monster, just different. It may even help you in your journey to become Hokage. Naruto smirked. Sounds like fun. Like I said, you're definitely your father's son. But let's take this one step at a time. If you need to talk to me you can do so telepathically by merely opening our link. Right now you need to wake up. Sasuke smirked to himself while breaking the sound Nin's arms. Suddenly a hand firmly gripped his arm stopping his action. Sasuke looked at the owner of the arm to see a changed Naruto. He was kind of like how he was when endowed with the Kyubi's chakra except he didn't look demonic, instead he looked more animalistic. That's enough Sasuke, he's beaten, let him go, said Naruto. Sasuke glared defiantly at Naruto. If not for your sake or his then do it for Sakura's, just look at what you're doing to her, shouted Naruto. Sasuke looked at Sakura and what he saw shook him down to his soul. She had a look of fear on her face and yet it also at the same time had a mix of sadness. Sasuke could never remember her ever looking at him like that. It seemed, almost unnatural. The markings on his body receded back to the curse mark on his neck, he fell to his knees panting. What happened to me? asked Naruto. Think of this as a pre-stage before you could enter the hybrid mode. Soon you'll learn how to bypass this stage and go straight into hybrid mode but for now this is necessary. Okay, how do I change back? Just think about it. Naruto started to picture himself as his normal self and before he knew it he had changed back. Naruto shook his head for a moment to regain his bearings. A lot had happened during his little talk on how to change back. The sound nins eventually left leaving behind their scroll. Ino gave Sakura a haircut to balance out the hair she lost. But for some reason Ino seemed awfully distant. Tenten had woken up Lee by shaking him violently. He and Sakura were apparently talking about something or another now. Tenten was now walking over to Naruto for some reason. Naruto didn't really know her that well. All he really knew about her was that she was Lee's teammate. Hey, you're Naruto right? Asked Tenten. Yep. What can I do ya for? Asked Naruto. Back there, you looked pretty feral. How did you do that? Was that some type of jutsu or something? Asked Tenten. Naruto suddenly started to sweat. Um no, it was a, bloodline. Yeah that's it. It's the bloodline of my family, said Naruto. He congratulated himself for a moment on thinking so quickly but then paused. Why do you want to know? asked Naruto. Oh no reason, just curious, said Tenten. She started to back away sheepishly but tripped over a rock. She got up and ran back to Neji and Rock Lee. That was weird, said Naruto. Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke were leaping through the trees. Okay. So we lost a scroll and then gained a scroll sending us back to square one. Am I right? Asked Naruto. That's how it went down, Dobi. Said Sasuke. Maybe we should split up. You know see if we could find some weak teams to take a scroll from. Suggested Sakura. That's a good idea Sakura-chan. Said Naruto. For once I agree with the Dobi. Meet back here in an hour. Said Sasuke throwing a kanai into the ground. 
so the members of Team 7 split up into three different directions. You know you've explained a lot to me lately but I don't even know your name, said Naruto. You may call me Alu. That's a nice name. Thank you Naruto, but if you excuse me I'm going to go and make fun of a certain fox. Okay, have fun. Naruto kept leaping from tree branch to tree branch until he heard some type of snickering and stopped. Right below him was three rain nins, so it's agreed, we'll use genjutsus on that team with the Uchiha until they agree to give us their scroll. I wouldn't do that if I were you, said a voice. The three rain nins looked around trying to find the source of the voice. Who said that? Who's there? demanded one of them. Up here brainier. They looked up to see about a hundred Naruto's up in the tree branches. This is bad, said another one of them. Get em boys, said the original Naruto. One hour later, Naruto saw Sasuke and Sakura talking with a man named Kabuto they met earlier. They hadn't noticed him yet so he decided to make a small entrance. He gave a low whistle catching their attention, he smirked as he twirled the obtained scroll at the end of his finger. Did somebody order a scroll? asked Naruto. You did it, Dobi, and just the one we need too said Sasuke. How the heck did you get one of those? Did you annoy them into giving it to you? asked Sakura. Sakura was shocked at what just came out of her own mouth. She would say some harsh things to Naruto every now for being annoying and then but that was just low. Naruto stopped spinning the scroll and walked over to her with a seriously pissed off face. Ya no Sakura. I've liked you for a really long time. And I probably like you a lot more than you deserve me to. Okay. I say, believe it, a bit more than I should, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, I'm not some prodigy like Sasuke, I'm always eager to learn a new jutsu and I like ramen a little too much. But that's who I am, and if that's not good enough for you then maybe the one who isn't worth the time of day isn't me but you, said Naruto. Sakura just stood there with her mouth hanging open. Naruto, Naruto of all people just told her off. Naruto tossed the scroll to her. Enjoy your scroll, Sakura-san. S. San? That's right. If you want me to call you Chan again, you're going to have to work your way up from the bottom. If you need me, I'll be going on ahead, said Naruto. Naruto leapt into the treetops, leaving behind one very stunned Sakura. Whoa. Didn't think you had it in Ya Champ, said Alu. Yeah. Well, I said it before and I'll say it again. Don't underestimate me. I'll be sure not to. You know, just because you're not a ninja prodigy doesn't mean you might not be a werewolf prodigy. You really think I could be a werewolf prodigy? Well I can honestly tell you your father was one. He was known in the ninja world as the Yellow Flash but to werewolves he had the nickname. Wow, really? Yes, and from what I've seen you will most definitely be every bit as good as he was. Well eventually anyways, you still got a long way to go champ. Well that's what I thought. Tell me Naruto, besides the ones I've already seen are there any villagers who treat you with kindness? There's the third Hokage and Aruka sensei, said Naruto. Anyone else? Well I guess there's Hanada, but she's kind of weird. How is she weird? Well more than once I've caught her looking at me only to look away once she realized I caught her. She can be pretty quiet sometimes and likes to fiddle with her fingers. But the weirdest thing of all is that she keeps stuttering whenever I talk to her. Elu. You're an idiot, said Elu simply. What? Why? Just keep jumping champ. It wasn't long until he reached the tower, and only an hour later the rest of Team 7 arrived. Sakura was remaining silent still shook from her little chat from Naruto. They nodded to each other and entered their gate. It took them a while but they figured out the message in the room but they got it. They were supposed to open the scrolls. They opened them up and a white smoke started to pour out of them. It's summoning something. Get rid of them, shouted Sasuke. They threw the scrolls to the far end of the room making them land in an X on each other. When the smoke cleared their former sensei stood before them. Aruka sensei? What are you doing here? asked Sakura. Look at you three, you've come a long way. I feel so proud I feel like buying you each a bowl of ramen. Yada. I'm gonna get ramen. Naruto please calm down, said Aruka. Aruka begins to explain to them what exactly the scrolls were for and what they represented. The next part of the Chunin exams begin the day after tomorrow. Wouldn't be right if you were to take the next part of the exam completely exhausted. I suggest you use this time to go home and rest up, said Aruka. Team 7 gave a sigh of relief they had been in the forest a bit too long. 
living off of bugs and sleeping on the cold hard ground had taken its toll on them. But not you Naruto, Hokage Sama says he wants to speak to the both of us for some reason so just follow me, said Iruka. Okay, but can we still get that ramen later? asked Naruto. Iruka sighed to himself. Sure, why not? Naruto beamed as he followed his former sensei. The Hokage smoked his pipe patiently in his office. There was a knock on his door and he smiled to himself. Hokage sama, Aruka Amino and Naruto Uzumaki are here to see you, said his secretary. Send them in. The doors opened and in walked Aruka and Naruto. Hey old man, how ya doin'? asked Naruto. Naruto, please try to show some respect, lectured Aruka. Oh, it's quite all right, Aruka. I'm quite used to it by now. Please, take a seat. Aruka and Naruto sat down on the two chairs in front of his desk. The old man let out a puff of smoke while collecting his thoughts, wondering how exactly to explain the situation. Tell me, what do the two of you know about this village's law about harems? Aruka and Naruto left the Hokage's office with saucer sized eyes. Both the last of our clans. I never saw it coming, said Aruka. What I never saw coming was that info about multiple wives needed to rebuild clans, said Naruto. The third Hokage had once tried to tell Sasuke this information but he was pretty sure he was only half listening. As Aruka started to head out of the hallway he noticed Naruto wasn't with him. He turned around and saw Naruto staring at a picture of the Yandaimi. The yellow flash of Konoha, those are pretty big boots to fill. Naruto felt a hand on his shoulder and saw Aruka sensei. Come on Naruto, let's go get that ramen, said Aruka. Naruto smiled as he followed Aruka out. Aruka and Naruto sat down at their favorite ramen stand. Some beef ramen please, and keep them coming, said Naruto. I'll have the same but give some sake too, I'm going to need it, said Aruka. Coming right up, said the chef. So tell me Aruka sensei, what was your clan famous for? asked Naruto. Let's just say we could wield a mean giant shuriken and leave it at that, said Aruka. As the two started to eat their ramen they were soon visited by the red-eyed Junin sat. Next to them. Hey Aruka, what's with the long face? asked Kurenai. I just got some big new involving myself and Naruto. We each need to find multiple wives so we can rebuild our clans, said Aruka. He looked at his sake cup and threw it over his shoulder taking a big swig from the bottle. Hitting it pretty hard, aren't you? asked Kurenai. I'm drinking for the both of us. Naruto's too young, said Aruka. An hour later, Naruto patted his pot belly and Aruka's words started to slur. I wash never there for him before. Hiccup, but I'm going to be there for him now. He's like my little brochure or maybe even a son, said Aruka. If it wasn't for the fact that Aruka was slurring his words, Kurenai would have been impressed. Not everyone would look at the Kyubi's container in such a way or offer such kindness. You know P, I always thought you were hot, is that so? Yes, but I wash afraid if I wear to make a ma viewed, hiccup, kick me in the gonadzish, and then any little friend quip we had be ruined, said Aruka. Kurenai paused at this, she had always considered Aruka a friend at most but she had never thought about him as anything else. Maybe it was time she did, he was an excellent gentleman great with kids, and could even kick ass when he had to. I think it's time I started to get you home, said Kurenai. Okay, hey Sheffy, put everything on my tab, slurred Aruka. You got it. As Aruka leaned on Kurenai for support as they walked Naruto could have sworn he saw a small trace of a blush on her face. Does she, could she, nah, said Naruto. Naruto got up and decided he could use a nice shower. Hey Naruto. I think you could use some new kanais and shurikens. The ones you have are about to fall apart. Yeah, I guess I should. I'll look for a shop or something tomorrow. But then you need explain some other things about me being a werewolf. Deal. Naruto stretched as he greeted the morning sun. His house was in its usual messiness with dirty clothes everywhere and a tower of ramen bowls. He often enjoyed this sight. But now was not the time to dawdle, he would have to hurry if he wanted to get everything done today. He had his morning ramen and got dressed. He locked up and left to get started on the day. Iruka awoke with a killer headache, wishing the sun would go back to sleep for another five hours. Morning, sleepy head. Morning, said Iruka irritably. Iruka paused for a moment. Something wasn't right. 
Let's see, he was in his own house, that was good, in his own bed, in his own room, with Karanai and IT? BWAH. What are you doing here? asked Aruka. Relax, last night you just got a little drunk, said Karanai. Aruka swallowed a large lump in his throat. What else happened last night? asked Aruka. Not what you're thinking, I can tell you that. We just talked, you told me how you usually tend to sleep in after drinking so I decided to give you a wake-up call, said Karanai. So you're only here because, yep. You left the front door open. You know you really need to lock up at night, said Karanai. Aruka gave a sigh of relief. Well I need to go and finish some paperwork. I suggest you get ready for your classes, said Karanai. She opened the door and was about to leave but paused to look at him. By the way Aruka, you can be a very good sweet talker when you get the guts. Just thought you should know, said Karanai. Without another word Karanai closed the door behind her leaving Aruka to his thoughts. Aruka's entire face did an atomic blush, he knew that there was something she wasn't telling him. Naruto ignored the usual hateful glares that were sent his way. He always just reminded himself that their glares would stop on his way to becoming Hokage, a figure which everyone in the village seemed to respect. New gear, where the heck am I going to find a shop to buy new ninja gear that won't throw me out? Asked Naruto to no one in particular. Naruto knew that if he went to any of the usual stores in this district of Konoha he would either be denied service or chased out. So therefore his only choice was to check out the districts he hadn't been to and hope for the best. Naruto kept walking until he heard a voice shout out to him. Naruto turned to his left and saw Tenten running towards him. Oh Tenten right? Asked Naruto. Yeah, what's up? Asked Tenten. Oh I'm just trying to find a decent shop where I can buy some shurikens and kanais, said Naruto. Naruto saw Tenten's face light up for some reason. Well you're in luck. It just so happens my parents own a store that has just what you need, said Tenten. Wow. Really? Asked Naruto. Yes but first I think I would like to see what you got, said Tenten. Naruto handed Tenten his kanai pouch. Tenten tisked as she looked inside at its contents. What's wrong? Asked Naruto. This gear is pathetic, said Tenten. What's wrong with them? Asked Naruto. Well first off your shurikens aren't supposed to be cracked nor rusty, she said taking one of them out. She took out a kanai that looked very old. And this thing looks like it'll break apart at any second. Come on, we're not wasting another second. Follow me, said Tenten. Tenten turned around and started to lead Naruto in the direction of her family's shop. Whatever you say Minnie Mouse, said Naruto. Tenten froze in her tracks, she took a moment to face him. What did you call me? People often made fun of her because of her hairstyle but in reality she loved her little hair buns. She had heard that Naruto could be a bit clueless sometimes but had a good heart, the very opposite of shallow. She had hoped she hadn't heard wrong. A uh, mini mouse. You know because of your hair buns. They kind of make you look like a mouse, they make you look, cute. Said Naruto shyly. Tenten gave a small blush, so she had heard right. At least the guy thought she was cute. Okay Romeo, this way. Said Tenten. Naruto blushed at the nickname as she lead him to the shop. Dodd. I'm home. And I brought a friend who needs some new gear, called out Tenten. A middle aged man came out from a room in the back to greet his only daughter. Hello, Tenten. Who's your little friend? Dad, this is Naruto. You believe who horrible his kanais and shurikens are? Do you think we could help him out a little? asked Tenten. Of course, anything for a friend of my little butterfly nose. Butterfly nose? asked Naruto. When it was baby a butterfly landed on my nose, dad's called me that ever since. Dad I'm not a baby anymore. Whined Tenten. Maybe but you'll always be my little butterfly nose. Dodd. You're embarrassing me. Said Tenten. Okay, okay. Now Naruto, exactly how many new kanais and shurikens do you need? A full set please. Said Naruto. Soon Naruto was once again fully stocked with for once good weapons. Thanks. What do I owe you? Asked Naruto. It's on the house this time, seeing as how you're Tenten's new little friend. Wow. Thanks, old man. Beamed Naruto. No problem. Now get out of here, you little scamp. Naruto left with a brightened face. Hey, Naruto. Let's hang out sometime, shouted Tenten. Um, yeah, sure. Okay. Called back Naruto. 
As Naruto had now finally left the building Tenten's father started rubbing his chin. Hum. What's wrong dad? Asked Tenten. Good grip on morals, respectful, high goals, very well. I wholeheartedly approve. When's the first date? Tenten's face did a mild blush. Dodd. You are so embarrassing. I can't believe you, shouted Tenten. Naruto beamed as he carried his pouch full of new kanais and shuriken. Now if only he had been watching where he was going maybe he wouldn't have bumped into someone who just so happened to be carrying some groceries. Oof. Hey watch where you're going, said a voice. Naruto looked up to see none other than Tamari. Oops sorry about that, my mind was elsewhere. Hey I know you, you're the sister of that jerk in the black pajamas. Tamari right? Asked Naruto. Tamari blinked in confusion for a moment or two. Oh yeah. You're the loud idiot who hangs out with the hot moody guy, said Tamari. Naruto hung his head in shame. Why is it always Sasuke? Hey you okay? Asked Tamari. Naruto quickly regained his composure. Of course, believe it. Here, let me help you, said Naruto. Naruto started to pick up some of her groceries. Tea thank you, said Tamari. Hey don't worry about it. The name's Naruto by the way, said Naruto. Tamari looked at him quizzically for a moment. Having Gara usually tended to have boys shy away from her. Who wanted to date someone who was Gara's sister. She couldn't help but wonder why this guy was helping her until it finally occurred to her. He was a leaf nin meaning he probably knew very little about Gara. Hey, don't you know who my brother is? Asked Tamari. Yeah, he's the freak with the mummy on his back right? Asked Naruto. No not him, my other brother, said Tamari. Naruto thought for a moment. Oh. The guy with the gourd. What's his name again? It's Gara Yubaka. Don't you know how dangerous he is? He'd kill you as soon as look at you, said Tamari. Tamari wasn't sure but she could have sworn she saw him smirk. Big deal. I can be pretty dangerous myself when I want to. If you think he's something just wait until you see what I can do, said Naruto. To say that Tamari was shocked would be an understatement. She had never heard someone talk with such a level of confidence. But she quickly got over it. Once he saw what Gara could really do he'd change his tone. And then he'd probably avoid her just like all the rest. Well I think that's everything. Said Naruto. He handed Tamari her groceries and started on his way. I'll see you around okay? Asked Naruto. Tamari shook her head, if he only knew. Later in one of the many forests of Konoha, a werewolf with silver fur stood giving himself a once over. He had a wolf head with a snout and wolf ears, in short the works. He stood a whopping six feet eight, he is still twelve after all, with a long bushy tail. His claws, although not made of metal still shone off in the sunlight. His canines were big and intimidating, but surprisingly enough his eyes were still blue. Wow. I feel, unbelievable. Said Naruto. Got that right champ, in your hybrid form you are stronger and faster than you ever were before. Said Elu. Naruto smirked. Faster you say? Naruto turned into a blur as he ran through the forest. Now this is what I'm talking about, having fun? Asked Alu. You bet. This is the kind of speed I've always dreamed of, said Naruto. If you think you're fast now just wait till you go under your full beast mode, then you'll really be moving, said Alu. Naruto stopped running. Is my full beast form better than my hybrid form? Asked Naruto. No. It's just different. In your full beast mode you can track better, run faster, you even get a bigger set of chompers. While in your hybrid form you're a better fighter, can perform hand seals, and your claws are bigger. Naruto smirked as he started to run back towards where he started. So what happens to me during a full moon? Do I get forced into my hybrid form or something? Asked Naruto. Oh hell no. That's just an old wives tale, but I won't lie to you, the full moon does affect you. However, it's more like you get an adrenaline rush from it. Normally the feeling is so exhilarating werewolves prefer to be in hybrid mode or even full beast mode just to get a bigger kick out of it. And silver. Avoid it if you can. A little bit will burn like you won't believe but a lot of it will kill you. Got it. What about other werewolves? Not too many of them to tell the truth. You probably won't run into any others so don't worry about it. Said Alu. Well, it's time for ramen. What? But we're not done yet. It's just a ramen break. Please. Ug. Forget silver. Ramen is your biggest weakness. 
All right, but only one bowl, said Elu. Naruto changed to his human form and put on his orange top half of his jumpsuit. If he had kept it on it would have been torn apart during the transformation. He really needed to find some shirts that could stretch. This wasn't to say that he didn't love his jumpsuit. Oh quite the contrary, it was so orange and bright that most of the time people had to look at him. Naruto beamed as he walked out of the forest and into the village. He kept walking until he found his favorite ramen stand, he entered Ichiraku's with a smile on his face. Hey old man, one beef ramen special please, said Naruto. You been ordering a lot of meaty ramen lately, any reason? asked the chef. Let's just say I developed a whole new appreciation for it, said Naruto. The old man merely shrugged as he started cooking. Naruto gobbled down his meal in five minutes and gave a contented sigh. That was good old man. Don't ever leave Konoha, complimented Naruto. Naruto could have eaten more but he still needed to figure out his werewolf powers more. So Naruto walked back to the forest with a slight spring in his step unaware that he was being followed by someone in the shadows once again. Naruto reached the forest once again but had this sneaking suspicion he was being watched. He took a quick look around but did see anyone. Naruto merely shrugged and entered the forest. As Naruto took off his shirt he could have sworn he heard a meep somewhere. Well that was weird, said Naruto. Naruto changed into his hybrid form and heard a gasp and a twig snap. Okay, I know I heard something that time, said Naruto. Naruto saw a small hint of a sleeve just barely peeking behind a tree. Acting on instinct Naruto charged forward. When the figure tried to run Naruto pounced on him, her pinning the figure to the ground. What Naruto saw clearly sent him for a loop, Hanada. Naruto? Naruto froze, Hanada had just found out his secret. Is that really you? Naruto immediately got off her. Hanada, I I, I can explain, stuttered Naruto. Hanada looked at Naruto for a moment. Could this really be Naruto? Okay she did witness him transform but could this really be the same boy she fell in love with? She stared into his eyes, they were still the same blue eyes she had fallen into so many times. It really is you, said Hanada. Looks like you're going to have to come clean bucko. Naruto sighed. He was hoping he could avoid this if he could but it looked like there was no way out of it now. He knew that Hanada was nice so there was a possibility she would keep his secret. Okay Hanada. Sit down. I'll tell you everything but it's going to take a while, said Naruto. Naruto figured that it would probably be best if he started at the beginning. Hanada was surprised to hear that the Yandaimi was not only a werewolf but Naruto's father, not to mention the fact that he was a werewolf too. When Hanada werewolves were looked at as monster and the fact that Naruto was already looked as a monster for having the Kyubi sealed within him it was no wonder he kept it a secret. Did she mention that she almost fainted at the part about the Kyubi? because that's almost what happened. To put it simply Hanada, I am at your mercy. I won't blame you if you hate me now but please don't tell anyone what happened here, said Naruto. What happened next sent Naruto for a loop, she hugged him. For once her feelings towards Naruto had overpowered her shyness causing her to comfort him in the best way she knew how. I could never hate you. You may be furry on the outside but you're still Naruto on the inside, said Hanada. It was amazing how a furry face could go from silver to red so suddenly. He couldn't recall the last time he was hugged so it was still a little new to him. She broke the hug and took a couple steps back. Her face was ten times redder than Naruto's. So uh this'll just be our little secret right? asked Naruto. Hanada blushed but nodded. So uh why were you following me? asked Naruto. Hanada suddenly started twiddling with her fingers while having a blushing face. WWW well ussc. Oh I get it now. You must have seen me eat only one bowl of ramen instead of my usual ten and decided to follow me to ask why I left so suddenly, said Naruto loudly. Hanada sadly nodded. Well at least she almost confessed, that was the closest she's ever gotten. Well it's getting kind of late. Maybe I should take you home, said Naruto. Hanada blushed once again and nodded. So Naruto escorted Hanada back to the village only this time he was getting confused glares instead of hateful ones. This was due to them wondering why the Hyuga heiress was wasting her time with a demon like Naruto. Once they reached the Hyuga manor Naruto rubbed the back of his neck. Well, goodbye I guess. I'll see you tomorrow at the preliminaries okay? asked Naruto. Hanada nodded with a slight blush. 
As Naruto left Hanada gave a contented sigh. She had spent a whole portion of the day with Naruto and even learned a few secrets about him. She entered the mansion beaming raising a few eyebrows of the branch family. Hanada walked to her room with a slight skip in her step. Unknown to her, her little sister had seen her and shook her head. Sometimes that girl scares me. Naruto was only half listening to the Hokage's speech about why the Chunin exams were held. He didn't care why they were held. All it meant to him was one step closer to being Hokage. He saw Sakura timidly raise her hand only to have Sasuke angrily pull it down. Don't you dare tell them about this mark. All the people I want to fight are in this very room, said Sasuke. Sakura looked hurt at Sasuke's actions, but Sasuke. Sasuke you jerk. She's only worried about you, steamed Naruto. Naruto. You're one of the people I want to fight the most, said Sasuke. Naruto looked surprised for a moment but suddenly started to smirk. Damn straight. If I wasn't then there would have been something seriously wrong with you, said Naruto. Kabuto had quit but that was okay. Naruto didn't really care. The guy smelled like snakes and mud for some reason. There was a coughing sound and the members of Team 7 were brought to the attention of someone who must have been the referee. All right now, the matches will be decided at random with the board behind me. The board settled on Sasuke fighting some sound nin. Would everyone except the two fighters please leave the area? Asked Hayate. Naruto started to go up the steps when Ino suddenly grabbed his wrist and ran all the way up the stairs. Hey! Ino, what do you think you're doing? Asked Naruto. I need to talk to you alone for a sec, said Ino. Ino led Naruto down the catwalk until they reached the end. Alright now what is so freaking important? Asked Naruto. I need you to help me, said Ino. Naruto stared at her confused for a couple of seconds until a scowl appeared on his face. Look, if this is some type of offer for me to try and hook you up with Sasjerk. No, that's not it, I want you to help me not be a fangirl anymore, said Ino. Zero to zero, I'm sorry but I think I had something un Eno like in my ear, said Naruto. I'm serious. Sasuke's actions in the forest of death made me realize something. He's not the same Sasuke I knew when I was a little girl. When I really sat down and thought about it I realized I didn't really know that much about him, and he didn't really know that much about me, said Ino. So why come to me about it? Asked Naruto. I heard about what happened between you and Sakura, I figured if anyone knew about how to get over someone it would be you, said Ino. Well you're already on to a good start. I guess the best thing I could really say is try to find someone who will treat you the way you deserve to be treated, said Naruto. Great. Now where am I going to find a guy like that? Asked Ino. How about Shikamaru? He's too lazy to be a boyfriend to anyone. Kiba? His dog keeps pissing on my leg. Choji? Get real. Neji? Hyuga version of Sasuke, Naruto. Right. How about Lee? Hell no. Shino? Not into bugs. Naruto started to list off all the guys with his fingers and an anger vein appeared on his head. Damn it, Ino. That's every guy the first no. If not them who? Asked Naruto. Ino shrugged causing Naruto to sigh. Oh well, I'm sure you'll find someone. Just remember what I told you about finding someone to treat you right and you should be fine. Said Naruto. Naruto walked back to Sakura shaking his head. What did Ino want to talk to you about Naruto? Asked Sakura. Oh it's nothing you need to worry about Sakura-san. Said Naruto. Sakura involuntarily winced. You know Naruto, I will do what it takes to get you to call me Chan again. I'll make sure of it, said Sakura. Don't just tell me, show me, said Naruto. She she Renden, shouted Sasuke. Oh right, Sasuke's fight. Forgot about that, said Naruto. Winner. Sasuke Uchiha. About time cockatoo head. I was able to hold up two conversations your fight took so long, said Naruto. An anger vein appeared on Sasuke's head. What did you call me? asked Sasuke. The back of your head kind of looks like the back of the head of a cockatoo. Don't tell me you never noticed, said Naruto. You know I never thought about it but Naruto does kind of have a point, said Shikamaru. Kakashi came down the stairs and said that he was going to go and try to fix Sasuke's little problem. The board started scrambling random names until it settled on two. Zaku Abumi vs Shino Abarame the bug user faced off against the man whose arms Naruto saved. 
Shino eventually won by sticking some Kakai bugs in the holes in his hands causing his own back to backlash him. He uses bugs, that is kind of creepy. But then again who am I to judge? I'm a friggin werewolf, thought Naruto. The next match was Konkuro against someone or another, Naruto didn't really care. Konkuro smirked as he faced off against his opponent. In a puff of smoke Kakashi appeared. Hey! Don't you! Hey, us! What about Sasuke? Is he, started Sakura. Oh don't worry about it Sakura, it's been taken care of. He's sound asleep at the hospital, said Kakashi. Sakura breathed a sigh of relief. However, he is being guarded by several ANBUs, said Kakashi. Sakura's face became worried again. Smooth move Kakashi sensei. You really know how to put someone at ease you know that, said Naruto dripping with sarcasm. Naruto heard a scream and looked down to see that Konkuro had won his fight with a puppet. Oh, so that's what he was carrying, a puppet, said Naruto. Cough. Winner of the match is Konkuro. Cough, said Hayate. Once again the billboard started up again until it finally landed on two. Sakura Haruno vs Ino Yamanaka, well this should at least be interesting, said Naruto. Sakura smirked as she went down the stairwell, she had a plan of action on how to deal with Ino. While Ino and Sakura were making their way to the floor Tenten was staring at Naruto. What did Ino want with him? She couldn't have decided that Naruto was a better target than Sasuke could she? Tenten was just starting to realize her feelings towards him, and she would fight for him if she had to. Hey, Tenten. Don't telling me you're staring at that blonde failure, said Neji. Tenten quickly turned to him with a glare. What if I am? He's certainly been a lot nicer to me than you have, said Tenten. Tenten poked him in the chest causing him to take a step back. He's been kinder, poke. Sweeter, poke. And more respectful to me than you ever were. Poke poke poke. So you can forget about me being your little fangirl from now on because I just might have found someone better. With one last poke she accidentally pushed him down the stairs. Ah! Yelped Neji. Tenten, it is not youthful to push Neji down the stairs, said Lee. Shut up, Lee. Hey, I know why don't you go hang with Naruto for a while. He's probably pretty hard working himself if I heard right, suggested Tenten. Fire started to burn in Lee's eyes. That is an excellent idea. From what I have seen in the forest I know that Naruto also possesses the power of youth, said Lee. As Lee ran off Ten Ten couldn't help but smirk. Maybe he'll even throw in a good word about me, thought Ten Ten. Sakura and Ino stared at the fallen Neji for a moment. Well that was weird, said Ino. Cough. The next match is between Sakura Haruno and Ino Yamanaka. Begin. Ino and Sakura jumped apart to keep their distance. Sakura smirked, it was time to put her plan into action. You know Ino, I'm not going to fight you over Sasuke, it's pointless, said a smug. Sakura. Oh you can have him, said Ino. What? asked Sakura. What? asked Shikamaru. What? asked Choji. What? asked Asuma. I'm through with Mr. Ice King, you can have him for all I care, said Ino. Then who will you, I don't know. I'll find someone. All right, less talking more fighting huh? Suggested Ino. Sakura tied her hiate to her forehead symbolizing that she was going to go all out. Ino smirked and did the same. At the respond of some unforeseen signal both charged towards each other. Sakura started to go through hand signs and created three bushins. Ino wasn't too worried, if they were cage bushins then she might have something to worry about. But with regular bushins all she had to do was decipher the original. Unfortunately she bet on the wrong horse and got a kick to the head. After that the two merely started to exchange blows. Neji limped up the stairs cursing himself for letting his guard down. Now he had a handicap. Sakura broke apart from Ino gaining some distance from her. Okay so getting Ino mad about not having Sasuke wouldn't work but that didn't mean she couldn't still get her mad. Ino just give it up already, said Sakura. What? You're not fit to be a ninja. The only thing you care about is being social and where you get your next outfit, said Sakura. Ino scowled. What did you say? Uh oh. Ino, you can't lose it now, thought Shikamaru. You heard me, you probably care more about your precious hair than completing a mission. I bet that if you lost it somehow you wouldn't even be here, said Sakura. 
Eno took a kanai and cut off her ponytail gripping it in her right arm. I don't need this hair to beat you, she lost it, thought Shikamaru. Eno threw her hair forward scattering it towards Sakura. She did a few hand signs and settled on having her hands forming a box. Don't tell me you're going to try that whole mind transfer thing on me? asked Sakura. You got it billboard brow, said Eno. You'd have to be able to catch me first, said Sakura. Sakura tried to move but something was holding her feet in place. That was when it hit her, Eno had thrown something at her that tied up her legs when she threw her hair at her. Shintenshin no Jutsu, Eno's body fell limp and a very Eno-like smirk appeared on Sakura's face. Naruto blinked in confusion. What the hell just happened to Eno? And what is wrong with Sakura's face? Asked Naruto. It's over. Though Shikamaru. The energy from Eno's Shintenshin mind transfer technique struck her head on. She's finished. Said Kakashi. Mind transfer. Then Sakura's not even. Started Lee. Exactly. Sakura's psyche has been overtaken and supplanted by that of Eno. Right now, Eno is inside Sakura. So, her goal is probably to, started Kakashi. Sakura, Eno timidly raised her hand. I, Sakura Haruno, wish to withdraw, from the match, said Sakura, Eno. Don't do it. Come on Sakura-san, shouted Naruto. What the, I thought he didn't care about her anymore, thought Eno. You said you were going to do what it took to get me to call you Chan again. Now prove it to me, shouted Naruto. So that's why you want to help her? Well sorry Naruto but she won't be able to prove herself this time. Sakura, Ino suddenly started shaking. What, I feel so cold, Naruto is so loud. And he's right, I can't let Ino beat me. Sakura. But, that's crazy, what's wrong? Are you withdrawing from the match? Asked Hayate. Are you kidding? I'm staying in, shouted Sakura. Naruto scratched his head. What the heck is going on? Asked Naruto. Soon both Ino and Sakura were huffing and puffing. This fight is weird. Said Naruto. There were two different psyches inside you before I got there. What? What on earth are you? Asked Ino. Hey. Don't you know? Even the sweetest girl needs a hard center, or she's not gonna make it out there. Said Sakura. Ino and Sakura charged at each other in one last kamikaze attack each land a punishing blow to the face knocking both their heights off. They each landed opposite of each other far away. Neither candidate is able to continue. As a result of simultaneous knockouts neither one moves past the preliminary round, said Hayate. What? shouted half the people. Both Kakashi and Asuma leapt down and retrieved their students before heading back up. Neither one is hurt badly enough to need treatment from the medical corps. They should both regain consciousness within the next half hour. But I'm impressed by both of them, said Asuma. Yeah, agreed Kakashi. Naruto and Sasuke were both doing well and now even fragile little Sakura has shown amazing strength. I know you've all been through a lot, but, I'm glad I enrolled you all in the Chunin exam. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Naruto looked around for a moment as if searching for something. Hey, where'd Tenten go? Asked Naruto. The fifth match of the preliminaries is about to start. Tenten against Tamari, please step forward, said Hayate. Naruto looked down and saw Tamari and Tenten ready to face each other. Damn that woman's sneaky, said Naruto. Hey, look, another candidate from the land of the sand. This should be fun, said Neji. Begin. Tenten jumped back and threw three shurikens at her opponent. Tamari seemed to flicker for a moment before the shuriken fell to the ground as if hit by something. What? But I always have perfect accuracy, thought Tenten. The fan ten ten. She's knocking away your attacks with the fan, shouted Naruto. The fan. Of course, thought Tenten. Tenten turned to Naruto and gave him a wink causing a blush to form on his face. Hey. You done flirting with your boyfriend yet? Asked Tamari. I never said he was my boyfriend, said Tenten. Never said he wasn't, said Tamari. Can we just fight? Asked Tenten. Meanwhile Sakura was just starting to wake up. So you finally came to A. Sakura. Asked Ino. Tenten, use the power of youth, shouted Lee. That's the spirit. Keep cheering her on, shouted Guy. Our match is over and done, said Ino. I, lost, stuttered Sakura. Sakura looked like she was about to cry but this only raised a sigh out of Ino. 
HMPH. I'm the one who should cry. It's a disgrace, a tie. You fought me to a standstill, said Eno. Eno pulled out Sakura's high eight. Here, I think this belongs to you. By the way, you've blossomed into a lovely flower, said Eno. Sakura took her headband and gave a sad smile. Eno, now that we're not fighting over Sasuke anymore, do you think we could be friends again? asked Sakura. Eno smiled. I think I'd like that, said Eno. Naruto winced as Tenten landed on Temuri's fan. That was a low blow. How dull. It's a shame, really, said Tamari. Well, we weren't about to let ourselves be defeated in a place like this, now were we? asked Konkuro. The winner of the fifth round match is Tamari, said Hayate. Naruto leapt down onto the floor. I'll take her, Tamari, said Naruto. Do you want her? Take her, said Tamari. Tamari flung Tenten off of her fan only to have Naruto just barely catch her. What the fuck is your problem? shouted Naruto. Naruto glared at her for a moment but then it changed to a face full of disappointment and pity. If you keep treating people like this, you're just going to end up all alone, and you'll only have yourself to blame, said Naruto. Tamari scowled. This moron should keep his opinions to himself. Just take her and go, said Tamari. Naruto shook his head and wrapped Tenten's arm around his shoulder. Thank you, Naruto, said Tenten weakly. No problem, you're one of my friends now. I help my friends, said Naruto. She somehow managed to muster a small smile, however, it only lasted for a moment. Still can't believe I was so humiliated by her, said Tenten. Hey, don't you worry about it. You were just out of your element that's all, said Naruto. Naruto had once again managed a smile to form on Tenten's face as he walked her to the Med Nins. The Med Nins took Tenten from Naruto and put her on the stretcher. We'll take her from here, said one of the Med Nins. I'll come visit you at the hospital, okay Tenten? shouted Naruto. Naruto earned one last smile from Tenten before the Med Nins carried her out. Naruto started to walk up the stairs where he was greeted by Sakura at the top. Hey Sakura-san. Feeling better already? asked Naruto. Yeah, but don't mind me. You just worry about yourself. If you let yourself lose now, you'll be a disgrace to all men, and Sasuke will never let you live it down, said Sakura. But no pressure, said Naruto. Hey, thanks, Naruto, for helping me out before. Ino almost had me until I heard your obnoxious voice trumpeting, said Sakura. Yeah, I sure saved your butt, said Naruto. Sakura managed not to pummel him by chanting a mantra of, I'm trying to get him to call me Chan Agun. While Sakura was talking to herself, Lee had managed to make his way over to them. These matches are certainly exciting, are they not, Naruto kun? asked Lee. Yeah, Lee. I can't wait to show off my stuff, said Naruto. Sakura sighed. They were like a bunch of kids. Okay, my turn. I'm good to go. Who thinks he can take me? asked Naruto. I have a feeling it's going to be me, said Lee. The board started up again and settled on another two names. Shikamaru Nara versus Kinsuchi, ah man, said Lee disappointedly. Rats, pouted Naruto. No need to pout cub, you'll get your chance, said Alu. Did you just call me cub? asked Naruto. Well you're not a kit that's for sure. I'll stop calling you a cub once I've seen you fully mature. What happened to calling me champ? asked Naruto. Oh I'll still call you that rest assured. Oh and by the way, you can't go hybrid during these fights, said Alu. What? Hello. Pitchforks and torches remember. But, but, okay. Kabong. Naruto winced as he saw Kin knock herself out against the wall thanks to Shikamaru. Oh. That has got to hurt, said Naruto. The winner is Shikamaru Nara, said Hayate. Kiba started listing the names of the remaining genins but Hanada wasn't paying attention. She was too busy staring at Naruto, yesterday their relationship had gotten a little closer. Hanada blushed as she started to daydream about Naruto, him in his werewolf form curled up around her sleeping and being used as a pillow by her. She prevented her thoughts from going hentai because she knew she couldn't handle them and probably would have died of blood loss. But that was okay, romantic thoughts were more than enough for her. Naruto Uzumaki vs Kiba Inazuka, well it's about time. Thanks for being patient everyone. I'm gonna make this worth your wait, shouted Naruto. I swear, 
You have got to be the loudest werewolf in history, said Elu. I'll take that as a compliment, said Naruto. Oh yes, thank you, thank you. We can take this guy, Akamaru. Akamaru? The small dog had disappeared from his jacket. Where'd ya go buddy? Asked Kiba. Kiba found Akamaru whimpering behind his leg. What's wrong boy? Asked Kiba. Akamaru yipped a couple of times followed by a whimper. This raised an eyebrow out of his master. What do you mean something's weird about him? Asked Kiba. Akamaru whimpered some more. What do you mean you don't want to fight him? Shouted Kiba. Naruto was already down waiting for Kiba so they could start the match. Hey Kiba. You forfeiting or what? Shouted Naruto. Kiba was busy trying to pry Akamaru away from the railing bar which he had so firmly clamped his teeth around. Be down in a second, shouted Kiba. Gur, growled Akamaru. Iruka Amino was walking with a bag full of groceries. Of course half of it was filled with ramen cups. I have really got to kick this ramen addiction before I end up like Naruto, said Iruka. One of his ramens fell out of the bag and started rolling away. No. That one's my favorite. Aruka started to chase after it but with his groceries made it a difficult task. He wasn't exactly sure how far he chased his precious ramen but he knew he wasn't anywhere near his apartment. He put the groceries down and bent over to pick up his ramen when. Chomp. Aruka screamed as something latched onto his behind. Bad dog. Bad dog. Shouted a voice. Aruka knew that voice, that was the voice of Hana Inazuka. He knew it because she had on more than one occasion run into him picking up Kiba from the academy. Hana injected a shot into the dog causing it to release its grip on Aruka's behind and fall into a sleep. But not without a price, re e e e e e e e p. Aruka blushed as he saw that the dog had a piece of his pants in his mouth and if he wasn't mistaken some underwear too. Oh my! said Hana. She just couldn't manage to avert her gaze from the hole in Aruka's pants. Aruka quickly turned around covering his new pants hole with his hands. Hey! Stop looking! said Aruka. A small blush appeared on her face. I'm not going to need shots am I? asked Aruka looking at the dog. No, he's just an aggressive guard dog that needed his shots. He ran out from us before we could do anything. You were probably the first person he saw on his run and I guess he just decided to do what he did best, said Hannah. Hannah noticed Aruka was busy contemplating how he was going to take his groceries home without revealing the hole in his pants. I, I could probably patch that up for you, said Hannah trying to push down a blush. Later, Hannah smiled to herself as she eyed her work on Aruka's pants. She folded the pants over her arm and walked over to a door. Aruka, I'm done, called Hannah. A hand quickly came out from behind the door, grabbed the pants, and pulled them back. In. A moment later Aruka came out with his pants on rubbing the back of his neck. Thanks Hana-san, said Aruka. No, said Hana, huh? You call me Chan. Hana-chan. Got it? Asked Hana. Um okay. Bye why? Asked Aruka. Well I realized I didn't really know that well so I decided to think about what I did know about you. You're a really good guy and I'd like to have you in my life, said Hana. Aruka blinked in confusion for a moment. Is she hitting on me or asking me to be her friend? Probably friend. Yeah, okay, said Aruka. Would you like to stay for dinner? Asked Hannah. Thanks but no thanks. I really need to get my groceries home, said Aruka. Okay perhaps some other time then, said Hannah. Aruka nodded and left. Kiba scowled as he stood opposite of Naruto. Sorry it took so long but somebody refused to come down, said Kiba. Akamaru whimpered up in the stands and hid behind Hanada's leg sadly. But it doesn't matter, I'll take you down either way, said Kiba. Don't be so cocky, you jerk, said Naruto. Naruto, don't you dare let that loser beat you, shouted Sakura. Well duh, Sakura-san, said Naruto. Aruka couldn't help but ponder why he was receiving such odd stares from the villagers. Wonder why they're all staring at me. He heard a giggling from behind. He turned around but who he saw was certainly a surprise. A hey, Anko-san. Anko giggled again. Maybe you can help me. Could you please tell me why the villagers are staring at me? Asked Aruka. Tell me, did you recently get a hole in your pants? Asked Anko. Actually yes I did, why? Asked Aruka. Because it shows. 
The patch job done on your pants was really poor, said Anko. I guess sewing isn't one of Hannah's strong points, thought Aruka. Both Kiba and Naruto clenched their fists. Don't worry. I'll be kind, I'll finish you off fast instead of dragging it out, said Kiba. Oh yeah. Well right back at ya, said Naruto. You're not fooling anyone with that cool act, said Kiba. Who says it's an act? asked Naruto. Naruto smirked causing Kiba to scowl. Well then, begin, shouted Hayate. Ninja art of beast mimicry, shikyaku no jutsu, down on all fours technique, shouted Kiba. Naruto blinked a couple of times at the new Kiba in front of him. Huh, he kind of looks like me in my prestige form only, punier, said Naruto. I'm not surprised. The Inazakas were inspired by werewolves. I guess you could kind of think of him as your cousin, said Elu. Really? Well that explains a lot, said Naruto. Here I come, shouted Kiba. Naruto swore for letting his guard down. Hey! Down for the count already, said Kiba. Kiba smiled smugly to himself until he heard laughter coming from Naruto's direction. Naruto? Ha ha ha! I've said it about a hundred other people and now I'm going to say it to you, said Naruto. Kiba turned and saw a fire in Naruto's eyes that he hadn't seen anywhere before. Don't, underestimate me, said Naruto. Go, Naruto, shouted Sakura. Yeah, cheered Lee. Oh Naruto, thought Hanada happily. All right, now I'm staring to get annoyed. Time I got serious, said Kiba. Kiba popped a soldier pill in his mouth and threw a smoke bomb at him surrounding Naruto in a purple cloud. Damn. I can't see a thing. Take this, man beast ultimate taijutsu gatsuuga, shouted Kiba. Naruto braced himself an instant before he was struck by a human spiral which was surprisingly sharp. When the smoke cleared Naruto stood holding the place where Kiba hit him tenderly. That hurt you jerk, shouted Naruto. How how could you still be standing? asked a shocked Kiba. Stupid jerk. He should be more careful, not that I care. I mean look at him, he's just plain pathetic, Baka, said Tamari. Konkuro eyed his sister oddly. Okay. What's her problem? She's acting kind of PMSY, thought Konkuro. Okay, now it's time to pay you back, said Naruto. Naruto placed his fingers into the signs for his cage bushin jutsu. And what makes you think I'll let you? shouted Kiba. Naruto tried to brace himself again but Kiba managed to hit him before he could, sending him sprawling to the ground. Ha! Huh. A weakling like you could never beat someone like me, proclaimed Kiba. Hanada frowned at Kiba's proclamation. Oh Kiba, you're wrong. Naruto is no weakling. And I wish I had even half the confidence he's always shown in himself. His courage is so amazing. I know all too well how hard it can be to stand up for yourself. And yet, for the longest time, no one would even admit he had any good points at all. They refused to see him as he really was, but. Naruto started getting up. Now everyone is watching, everyone is acknowledging him, his determination. Naruto smirked. Who you calling a weakling, ya pansy? asked Naruto. What did you call me? asked Kiba. You heard me. I actually expected a lot better from you, said Naruto. Kiba growled and crouched down to all fours, Gatsuga. Kiba once again spun towards Naruto only this time he jumped out of the way. However, Kiba hadn't seen such a move coming and crashed into the wall. Normally this would cause him to act as a drill but since he was so surprised this only allowed a slight crash. Kiba came out of the crash a bit dizzy. All right back to work, said Naruto. Kiba quickly recovered from his daze and ran towards Naruto. He slid around to attack Naruto from behind. However, this would prove to be a most unwise move because. Pfffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffff
Cage Bushin no Jutsu, shouted Naruto. There were now five Narutos, one of them ran up to Kiba and delivered a punch to his face. You. The original Naruto ran up his back and leapt into the air. Three Narutos slid on the ground kicked Kiba upwards. Zu. M.A. Ki. Kiba was greeted at the top by the original Naruto kicking him downward to the ground. Naruto Renden. Kiba was slammed down onto the ground face first. Hayate coughed a couple times. And the winner is Naruto Uzumaki. Yeah. Cheered Lee. Oh, yeah. That feels good. Cheered Sakura. Holy crap. When did Naruto get this good? Asked Shikamaru. Yes. Cheered Hanada on the inside. Naruto smiled smugly to himself. And I didn't have to use even my prestige on him. Naruto beamed as he ran up the stairs. Hanada swallowed a large lump in her throat. She hoped she could do this. Yesterday it was a miracle she even managed to hug him but today? To try and give him something? A present? She just hoped she could do it without fainting. Naruto was about to walk back over to Kakashi and Sakura when he heard someone squeak his name. He turned to see Hinata holding out some kind of jar. What's that stuff? Asked Naruto. It's an ointment for wounds, said Kurenai. Wow. Thanks Hinata. You're even nicer than I thought you were. Especially considering, Yano, yesterday. At the mention of yesterday Hinata's entire head glowed red. Hey. Exactly what happened yesterday? asked Kuranai. Not what you're thinking, I can tell you that much, said Naruto. I it's ASSS secret, said Hanada. Kuranai was a little taken back by the fact that Hanada was keeping a secret from her, but she couldn't help but smile at how happy Hanada seemed to be whenever she was around Naruto. They're cute together. Hum, maybe I could arrange a double date. Yes, that'll work, me and Aruka, Naruto with Hanada, thought Kuranai. Naruto took some of the salve and placed it on one of the wounds he got from Kiba and almost immediately a dream-like smile appeared on his face. Wow. This ointment is like really really good, said Naruto. Naruto felt some killing intent directed towards their direction and saw Neji glaring at Hanada. What are you looking at Stairboy? asked Naruto. Naruto turned back to Hanada but found her missing. Damn it. Are all women sneaky? asked Naruto. Naruto saw that Hanada was down the stairs by Kiba ready to give him some ointment she just gave Naruto. Oh well, back to my own team I guess, said Naruto. K Kiba kun, Kiba turned his head towards Hanada. Th this is a healing salve, for you and Akamaru, said Hanada. Nice of you to worry about everyone else but save some of that concern for yourself. There are only six of you left, you, Choji, Neji, Lee. One from that sound village, and that guy from sand, said Kiba. Hanada was beginning to think she knew where Kiba was going with this and she wasn't sure what she should do. If they pair you off against that sand ninja withdraw immediately, and not just him. The same goes for Neji. If you have to face him, don't fight. Forfeit. He's so cruel to you, you'd be torn to pieces, said Kiba. Cough. Well then, the next match will be, started Hayate. Hanat Hayuga vs Neji Hayuga Hanada gasped. Of all the people she could have fought why did it have to be Neji? Hanada stood in front of Neji averting her eyes from him. I never dreamed we'd find ourselves fighting each other, Hanada Sama, said Neji. Neji, hun? She's his sister, shouted Naruto. Both are members of Konoha's oldest and most illustrious family, though whose veins flows the most elite and accomplished blood, the Hayuga clan. But they're not brother and sister, said Kakashi. Then how are they related? asked Sakura. Well, it's complicated. I guess you could say they're related in the same way that a tree branch is related to the trunk, said Kakashi. Branch and trunk? Yes. Hanada is a member of the main branch of the Hyuga clan and Neji is a member of the cadet branch that supports it, said Lee. So it's family fighting family? That'll be hard on both of them, said Sakura. Maybe not as much as you think. There's been strain between the central and cadet branches of Clan Hyuga for some time. Relations aren't exactly friendly, said Lee. Why's that? asked Naruto. I don't know all the details, but it sounds like a pretty common tale among older families. The first generation of the Hyuga clan made all sorts of rules and decrees that favored the main branch of the family in order to preserve the family line and retain the purity of their blood. It's said that members of the cadet branch still burn with anger and humiliation, said Lee. 
So it's one of those fateful showdown things then, said Sakura. Cough. Well, please begin the match, said Hayate. Neji continued to glare at Hanada. Before we begin, there's something I have to point out to Hanada sama, said Neji. Hanada looked at Neji questionably. You're not cut out to be a shinobi. Withdraw from the match, said Neji. You're all sweetness and light, a peacemaker, not a troublemaker. You're easily led, not a leader, said Neji. Hanada's face fell sadly, and you have no self confidence. You've got a world class inferiority complex, so I know you'd have been more comfortable and content staying at the genin level. But applicants for the higher level Chunin selection exam must compete as a trio, and you couldn't bear to let your teammates down. The truth is, your participation has been reluctant from the start, hasn't it? asked Neji. And no, you're wrong. I, comma, I really wanted to change that about myself. So, of my own volition, I, stuttered Hanada. A leopard doesn't change its spots. Hanada sama, you're the sheltered little baby of the main branch, aren't you? asked Neji. What? asked Hanada. Fear started to show on Hanada's face. A failure always fails, and a weak personality won't become strong, said Neji. Naruto started to scowl. It's precisely because of the unchangeable nature of humankind that differences between people are born. It's why we've coined terms like elite and failure. It doesn't matter who you are, we're all judged on the basis of our looks, our intelligence, our talent, our personalities, just as we judge others in turn. Yes, it's a form of discrimination. And the factors that it's based on don't change. We have no choice, we must live within the boundaries set for us by the judgment of others. It's as unchangeable as the fact that I'm of the cadet branch of the family and you're a member of the main branch, said Neji. A. N. Okay, now I'm just getting sick of typing Neji's speech. No wonder a lot authors skip it. Sigh. But I won't stop halfway, I refuse to become lazy on my readers. I shall make this story accurate. Naruto started to tremble with anger. This guy was starting to royally piss him off. I've seen through many things with this all seeing by Akugan eye, and so I know, this courage you're displaying is just a bluff. In the truest, deepest part of your heart, you're desperate to run away from here right now, said Neji. And no. I really want to, started Hanada. Kakashi started to explain exactly what the Byakugan was but Naruto wasn't listening in the slightest, he was too busy fuming at Neji's treatment of Hanada. Neji activated his Byakugan with a fierce glare. Hanada started to shiver with fear. My eyes can't be deceived, said Neji, Hanada gasped. Just now, to escape my stare you averted your own eyes, glancing towards this upper left. It signaled your recall of a past experience, one that brought you pain. When you subsequently glanced to the lower right it indicated that you were envisioning physical and mental agony. In other words you recalled your own previous experiences, and based upon those memories you imagined the outcome of this match. You foresaw, your own defeat, said Neji. Hanada flinched. Even now as you bring your arms up in front of your body as if to shield yourself, your body is signaling your desire to raise a wall between us, to create some distance from me. You implore me to come no further, to peer no more deeply into the innermost secrets of your heart because everything I have said so far has been right on target. Naruto started growling like a wolf would if he were protecting his mate. Sakura, slightly unnerved by Naruto's actions took a step back from him. Naruto. Asked Alu. What? You're growling. Well maybe I want to growl. In addition, the way you're touching your lip, it's another of those tender, intimate behaviors that express the agitation in your heart, it's a defensive reflex, an attempt to ease your own anxieties and doubts, it's completely clear, whether you admit it or not that you are aware that you can never change yourself. Yes, she can, shouted Naruto. Both Neji and Hanada looked up and Naruto shocked at the outburst. You can't just arbitrarily decide these things about other people you fool. Show him, Hanada, beat up this idiot, shouted Naruto. Hanada seemed to stare at Naruto in awe. Naruto. Come on, Hanada. At least talk back to him. Just hearing him has made me mad, and it's you who has to fight him, shouted Naruto. Neji glared at Naruto, not noticing that a new spring of confidence started to form in Hanada's eyes. Naruto. Thank you, thought Hanada. Neji turned back to Hanada, surprised to see the fear in her eyes completely gone. The look in her eyes is different now, thought Neji. So you're not going to withdraw, then I won't be responsible for what happens here, said Neji. 
Hinata activated her own Byakugan remembering the words of Naruto's Nindo. I comma I don't want to run anymore. Thought Hinata. Hinata got into her Juken stance. They have the same Hyuga style after all, even her stance is identical to Neji's, said Lee. Hyuga style? Asked Sakura. The strongest school of Taijutsu in Konoha, said Lee. Huh? Asked Naruto. I've mentioned it before, I'm sure, that the strongest junior ninja is a member of my own team. I was referring to Neji, said Lee. Hinata and Neji started to exchange blows via palm thrusts, she managed to graze the side of his body. Did she get him? asked Sakura. No, it's just a scratch, said Naruto. But a scratch is all it would take. That's why the Hyuga clan is often regarded as Konoha's most illustrious family, said Lee. Huh. What do you mean? asked Sakura. Among the Hyuga, there are unique taijutsu passed down from one generation to the next. Unlike the taijutsu that Lee and I specialize in which is all about beatings, bruises and broken bones, a style its proponents call Goken, or, Ferocious Fist. The Hyuga clan employs Juken, or, Gentle Fist, to inflict damage to the enemy's Kirakuki, through which the chakra flows. That leads to the breakdown of the internal organs, destroying the foe from within. It doesn't look like much but the effect grows gradually after the initial attack, said Guy. There's no way of strengthening the internal organs so any enemy struck with that blow is going to succumb, said Kakashi. Hanada kept pressuring attack after attack. I can do it, thought Hanada. Yeah, way to go Hanada, cheered Naruto. Lee started to explain about certain chakra flows but Naruto wasn't really listening. He was almost mesmerized by Hanada's fight. Uh huh. That's great Lee, said Naruto. Lee looked between Naruto and Hanada's fight back and forth for a minute before flames erupted in his pupils. Yosh. Naruto holds the youthful flames of love for Hanada, exclaimed Lee. Hanada almost tripped and Naruto turned around so fast that if you blinked you would have missed it. What? I never said anything about that, shouted Naruto. Guy sensei, I hope I too may find someone as wonderful to me as Hanada as to Naruto, said Lee. You can do it Lee, just so long as you stay youthful, said Guy. Guy sensei, Lee, Guy sensei, Lee. Guy sensei Lee. Make them stop, shouted Sakura. Unfortunately for Sakura no one heard her plea, especially Naruto who was still trying to find a way out of his embarrassing situation. But, I, she, I don't think she'd, stuttered Naruto. Kakashi patted him on the shoulder. It's okay Naruto, nobody is implying anything. Let's just enjoy the fight now, huh? Suggested Kakashi. Hanada supposedly landed a solid blow to the chest. All right, cheered Naruto. However, Naruto was shocked to see that it was Hanada who coughed up blood. Hanada gritted her teeth and tried attacking again but what she didn't know that was through the entire match Neji had B striking her chakra points in her arm. He pulled her sleeve back to show her the places he hit with his fingers. It can't be. You mean, from the very beginning, asked Hanada. Precisely. My eyes can detect the Tenketsu, said Neji. Kakashi started to explain about the Tenketsu or chakra points that can stop or increase the flow of chakra, but Naruto was too busy witnessing the battle turn in Neji's favor. Hanada was sent flying back from a palm thrust. Hanada sama, this is the unalterable difference in strength, the distinction that separates the elite from the failure. This is unchangeable reality. From the moment you said you wouldn't run, your defeat was inevitable. The only possible outcome was your present despair, said Neji. Hanada huffed and puffed trying to catch her breath. I, withdraw, shouted Neji. And never, go back on my word, struggled Hanada. Naruto was shocked, that was his Nindo, because that's, my shinobi way, too. Just like me, thought Naruto. Naruto couldn't stop staring, Hanada refused to go down. Man, she's got guts, said Naruto. She's a lot like you, said Lee. Yeah, I've noticed that she's always watching you, Naruto, teased Sakura. Yosh. You will be a perfect couple together, shouted Lee. Naruto blushed. Would guys stop that? I'm trying to watch this, said Naruto. Neji continued to glare at him. Come here, said Neji. Hanada tried to take another step but coughed up blood again. That kid is already at her limit, one more attack and she'll, thought Kurenai. Hang in there Hanada, 
shouted Naruto. Naruto, thought Hanada. The look of strength is back in her eyes, thought Neji. Hanada sprinted forward ready to attack. I've watched you for years. Why is that, thought Hanada. She pressed on her attack but failed in landing a single blow. I don't know what it is, but, when I watch Naruto, I feel a wellspring of courage bubbling up inside me. I feel like if I just do my best, then even I am worth something. That's how I start to feel, thought Hanada. Neji swatted away Hanada's arm and delivered a punishing blow to her chin. Whoa! That was a low blow, shouted Naruto. Hanada coughed up blood a couple of times before charging at Neji again. Naruto! I've been watching you for such a long time, but now at last, you're watching me, thought Hanada. Neji batted away Hanada's palm thrust and countered with one of his own. Hanada fell to the ground after coughing up some more blood. Don't you know when to quit? From the start, your attacks have been completely ineffective, said Neji. That was Jenny's master stroke. It targets the heart. It's a pity, but the girl can no longer even stand, said Guy. Hayate sighed to himself, sometimes he hated his job. Seeing as the match cannot go on, I, don't stop it, shouted Naruto. Sakura was about to lecture Naruto but stopped mid-sentence when she saw Hanada starting to get back up. Needless to say everyone was shocked at the girl's willpower. Why are you getting up? If you push too far you really will die, said Neji. It's because now the person I've admired for so long, is finally watching me and, thought Hanada. Why? Thought Neji. And in front of him, I can't bear to look uncool, thought Hanada. Naruto smiled to himself, he had underestimated her. Th this isn't over yet, said Hanada. You're not fooling anyone. I can see with these eyes, it's taking all your strength just to stand. You were burdened from birth with the destiny of the Hyuga clan's main branch, you've hated and punished yourself for your own weakness and frailty but you can't fight your nature or change your fate. But you need not suffer anymore. Be at peace, said Neji. But you're wrong, cousin Neji. I can see it now, that ever more than me it's you who are torn and suffering, caught between the destinies of the main branch and cadet branch of our clan, said Hanada. In a pure act of rage Neji charged towards Hanada ready to end her life. Neji. The match is already over, shouted Hayate. Luckily Guy, Kurenai, Hayate, and Kakashi had managed to step in and stop his attack. Guy started to lecture him on breaking some type of promise. Hanada started to have a coughing fit on the ground coughing up blood. Hanada. Shouted Kurenai. Naruto, Sakura, and Lee leapt down to see if they could help Hanada in any way. Hanada. Hey, are you alright? Shouted Naruto. She doesn't look good. Her face is so pale, said Sakura. Hanada stared up at Naruto's face with heavy eyelids. And Naruto, I, wonder if maybe I, managed to change, just a little bit. With those last thoughts Hanada lost consciousness. Hey, hey, you, Mr. Failure, called Neji. Naruto turned to face Neji. A couple words of advice. A true shinobi warrior would have too much class to make a spectacle of himself by cheering during a serious match. And one more thing, you may as well accept who you are. Once a failure, always a failure, said Neji. Oh yeah, insulting a werewolf is always a smart idea, said Alu sarcastically. Naruto glared at Neji. You wanna try me? challenged Naruto. Hey! Naruto started running towards Neji full intent of knocking his lights out when Lee suddenly appeared in front of him arms spread out stopping his charge. Get out of my way Lee! warned Naruto. Naruto, I understand almost painfully well what you're feeling Naruto. But, we have to limit our battles to the confines of the scheduled fights. Having seen this failure strike down and defeat a genius through sheer force of will, it really makes you look forward to the final rounds, eh? Even though his opponent could very well be me. But even if it's you in the finals, Naruto I'll have no regrets, said Lee. Yeah. I get it, okay. Asked Naruto. Lee and Guy gave each other nice guy poses. Hanada coughed up more blood. Kuranai opened her jacket and didn't like what she saw. Oh no, she's going into ventricular fibrillation, he really intended to kill her, thought Kuranai. Kuranai sent a cold glare towards Neji. Instead of wasting time scowling at me you'd better take care of her said Neji. Where are those medics? Hurry, shouted Kuranai. The medics said a small apology as they ran over to Hanada and started to put her onto the stretcher. 
At this rate, she won't last 10 minutes, we've got to get her to the emergency room right now, said one of the medics. Naruto gave a small gasp at this. Hanada, Naruto walked over to where she coughed up some blood. I give you my word, he picked up some of her blood and pointed his fist towards Neji. I vow to win. That kid so doesn't know his place, it's funny, he has no idea how outranked he is, said Konkuro. Tamari hit Konkuro on the back of the head. Ow! What did you do that for? asked Konkuro. Tamari blinked a couple of times. I don't know, said Tamari. If you don't know then why'd you do it? asked Konkuro. Don't make me hit you again said Tamari. Konkuro winced and decided to drop the subject. He noticed Gara squirming and flinched. This isn't good. Gara's smelled blood and now that thing is waking up, starting to fidget, the demon that lives within him. He saw Neji walking away. But that Neji guy, you'd think he hadn't even been harmed, that he still has hidden reserves of strength, we've got to start planning ahead to prepare for the final rounds. He saw Naruto slowly walking up the stairs staring at his feet. Maybe I should gather some intelligence. Naruto's an idiot but he'd be a good place to start. Naruto stood on top of the stairs his mind full of curious thoughts. Why was he feeling so protective of Hanada? He barely knew the girl. But she was very nice to him, she never hit him that's for sure. Maybe it was because in some way they were both the same, both failures. He had no idea they had the same Nindo that was for sure. I should visit her in the hospital, she's a really good person. Hey. Naruto turned to see Konkuro and gave him an annoyed stare. You're a funny guy, I like that, said Konkuro. Well you're not funny at all and I don't like that, said Naruto. An anger vein appeared on Konkuro's head. That miserable little, you are so toast the first time I get an excuse, thought Konkuro. What the heck do you want? shouted Naruto. Well you see, it's about that Hyuga Neji guy, but. Naruto crossed his arms. I'm gonna get that guy. He'll be lucky if he's still in one piece, said Naruto. Well, you're certainly fired up. Gonna avenge your girlfriend, huh? asked Konkuro. She isn't my girlfriend, said Naruto. Could have fooled me, I could hear you growling from the opposite side of the room, said Konkuro. Do you want me to kick your ass? asked Naruto. Touchy, you're kind of acting like my sister. Maybe it's a blonde thing, said Konkuro. Naruto sighed. Cough. Cough. Now, then it's time for the next bout, said Hayate. I guess it's finally your turn. Go, Lee, said Guy. No way, said Lee. Needless to say everyone was surprised at Lee's attitude. I've waited this long, if it were up to me I'd rather be the final act, said Lee. It almost like Lee is sulking, thought Sakura. Inside Naruto's mind Alu was looking back and forth between Lee and Guy. Wait a second, Naruto said Alu. What? Are those two father and son? Nope, just student and sensei. No way. Look at those eyebrows, they got to be hereditary. Lee's an orphan. Look can we talk about this later? Oh alright cub, you win. The board once again started up. Gara used his sand to teleport himself down to the arena. Don't keep waiting. R-O-A-R-R. Roar. R-O-A-R-R. I'm safe, shouted Choji. Naruto rolled his eyes at Choji's actions, he always did care more about food than fighting. Gara vs Rock Lee, okay, you caught me. As soon as I said I wanted to be last I was thwarted. It's a natural law you can throw a stone at a telephone pole time and again and never hit it but the minute you aim to miss, you end up hitting the thing dead center, exclaimed Lee. That's my youthful student, cheered Guy. Oh brother, thought Sakura. Lee. I've noticed something crucial that most people may have overlooked, said Guy. Lee saluted his sensei. Yes, sir, that gourd thing of his is quite suspicious, said Guy. Lee scribbled furiously on his notepad. I see, stop taking notes. You won't have time to consult them in the heat of battle, said Guy. Lee continued to scribble. I see, I hope Lee will be alright, thought Sakura. Alright. Go get him, Lee, shouted Guy. Yes, sir, shouted Lee. Lee leapt off the catwalk and landed across from Gara. It is an honor to face you so early on, said Lee. Gara merely HMPHED. Looks like Gara got himself an easy win. Your guy doesn't stand a chance, said Konkuro. Wrong, 
said Naruto. Konkuro raised an eyebrow towards Naruto. That guy is strong, a lot stronger than you think, said Naruto. Anyone who can kick Sasuke's butt is strong in my book, and entitled to ramen, my treat, thought Naruto. Iruka couldn't help but wonder what kind of higher being was poking fun at him this time. He was in Anko's apartment sitting in the bathroom while she tried to improve on Hannah's patchwork. The only problem was that Anko kept trying to come up with excuse to barge in on him, luckily none of them worked well enough for him to let her in. Why me? asked Iruka. There was a knock on the door. Iruka, I'm done. Called a voice. Iruka opened the door slightly and snatched his pants and closed the door before Anko could sneak a peek. Iruka's sweat dropped at Anko's, improved, handy work. She's as bad as Hannah. Aruka sighed and put on his fixed pants and exited the bathroom to see Anko waiting for him with a glint in her eyes, one which Aruka wasn't entirely sure he trusted. Um thanks Anko I guess I'll be going now, said Aruka. He started to head towards the door but was stopped when Anko suddenly snatched his arm. Wait. What's your hurry? Stay a while, said Anko. Uh sorry Anko but I really need to be getting home, said Aruka. Then how about I meet you for dinner? asked Anko. Aruka gulped, the famous Anko had set her sights on him. The only question was, why? Anko. Why the sudden interest? asked Aruka. Anko hung her head for a moment which caused Aruka to raise an eyebrow. All right you caught me. I am so sick of dating guys that seem okay only for them to turn out to be total pervs and jerks. I want someone to pay for my dinner instead of the other way around. I'd like to be treated like a lady instead of a way for some guy to get laid. In short, I'd like to be treated like a lady by a true gentleman, which as it turns out is you, said Anko. Zero to zero Lee just barely managed to avoid a blast of sand by leaping backwards into the air in a rolling position until he finally landed on the statue's fingers. Lee didn't know what to do, all of his attacks were blocked by that stupid sand. All right Lee, take him off, shouted Guy. But but Guy Sensei, you told me to only to remove them to protect those precious to me, said Lee. Yes I did, but I'm going to make an exception in this case, so go ahead and take them off, said Guy giving him the nice guy pose. Lee smiled and started to pull off his orange leg warmer to reveal weights. Weights? thought Naruto. Ah now I will be able to move much more freely, said Lee. Tamari smirked to herself. Ha! Huh. Just because he removed some weights isn't going to make a kaboom. The weights Lee had caused a huge dust cloud when they hit the ground. Kakashi's sweat dropped. Guy, you really are too much sometimes. He was wearing those the whole time, and here I thought I had endurance, thought Naruto. Then in a blink Lee disappeared. Where did he, started Gara. Before Gara could even finish his question he got his answer, a fist punching through his protective sand. To say that Gara was surprised would be an understatement, no one had ever gotten past his sand before. Lee disappeared again only to punch through some sand on the other side. For the first time ever Gara started to panic, he couldn't tell where he was going to pop up next. And worst of all his sand couldn't keep up with him. Yeah, go Lee. Show that Wakan beach who's boss, shouted Naruto. Tamari silently chuckled to herself. She thought that was a pretty funny insult even if she would never admit it out loud. Lee appeared above Gara and delivered a swift downward kick to the head. Yeah. That's right, don't mess with leaf ninjas, shouted Naruto. Lee was shocked to see bit and pieces of Gara's face fall off crumbling into sand. What? You think that, I'm, so you, stuttered Aruka. Yes I've checked all the other male nins and you're the most gentlemanlike, said Anko. Are really? Yes. Anko started to smile lustfully. Lucky you. Aruka started to sweat. He knew that smile from the stories he had heard about her. Um look. A peeping Tom. Anko rolled up her sleeve and turned to the window. Where? As of late she had been having a feeling that there was a peeping Tom that always spied on her in the baths, but now if he was following her home there was going to be hell to pay. However, she saw no peeping Tom, when she turned back around the only thing left of Aruka was a note. She grumbled to herself as she picked up the note. Dear Anko, I'm sorry but I really most get my groceries home before they spoil. I'm flattered you've taken an interest in me but I'm afraid I can't go out with you at the moment. Maybe some other time. Aruka Anko sighed to herself but started to smirk. I'll get you soon enough, 
Aruka kun. Li panted heavily, the lotus had already failed, he was extremely worn, and not to mention he was getting his ass kicked by sand all over the place, he wasn't sure what to do. Come on Li, you said that failures could beat geniuses if they try. Now prove it. Muttered Naruto under his breath. Li suddenly started to smile as another blast of sand was starting to head his way. Now he's happy he's going to die? Asked Naruto incredulously. In a blink Li had dodged the sand blast, he's got his speed back? Li got into an odd stance. Now what's he doing? Asked Naruto. Whatever you're trying to do, it's not going to work, it's over, said Gara. Bit of broken floor started to rise into the air. You're right, it is over. One way or another this next attack will end it, said Lee. Lee's face started to glow red. Naruto could swear that heard Kakashi shout something like, Guy what did you do this time? Illegitimate father, shouted Alu, Alu would you knock it off? Shouted Naruto. Lee was hitting Gara in so many different directions it was starting to make some of the spectators dizzy. Wow. He's giving him a pounding in midair, said Naruto. Lee gave a look over to Neji. Are you watching Neji? This is the move I planned on using on you. Gives you something to look forward to huh? Thought Lee. Lee gave one final tug of his bandages that had wrapped around Gara's waist. This is IT. Gara winced as he was hit with both a punch and a kick at the same time. Hidden Lotus. Gara landed on the ground causing an explosion. When the dust settled Gara was in a crater and Lee started to limp away but Gara would be damned if he ever let someone just walk away. He used some of sand in a last attempt to crush him. He could only manage to get his sand wrapped around his left arm and leg but it would have to do. Gara closed his hand causing the sand to crush the two contained limbs. Lee cried out in pain as the bones in his arms and legs were crushed. The sand started to reconfigure itself around Gara. He sent another wave of sand towards Lee only to have it knocked away by Guy. Gara held the right side of his face in pain. You saved him. But why, he lost, said Gara. Because he is my student but he's more than that. He is someone who is precious to me, said Guy. Because he's your son I knew it, shouted Elu. Elu would you knock it off? You completely ruined the moment, shouted Naruto. Gara being one who would never understand such words, started to walk back towards the stairs. Winner of the match Ga, but Hayate stopped for what he saw was literally unbelievable. Lee stood in his typical pose with one hand out. Impossible. How could he still be standing? Thought Gara. Guy walked over to Lee with tears in his eyes. Lee, even when you've lost consciousness you still refuse to give up on the fight. Cried Guy. Iruka sighed as he fell into his bed. He had one hectic day that was for sure, but he knew tomorrow was going to be worse. Naruto glared furiously at the floor. It wasn't fair, Lee fought so hard and gave the fight everything he got and now because of it the doctors say that his condition would never allow him live a life of a ninja ever again. Naruto always felt that he could relate to Lee. He knew what it was like to be looked down upon, what it was to have to gain strength by working hard. Naruto suddenly felt a furry dwell inside him as he watched the med nins carry Lee's unconscious form away. You said we could do it. You said all we had to do was try. It was all a lie wasn't it? Kakashi landed next to Naruto and put a hand on his shoulder. Naruto, calm down, said Kakashi. But Kakashi sensei, it's not fair, said Naruto. No it's not, but Lee was so obsessed with proving his dream he never once thought of the price he had to pay. Now because of it he can never live his dream again, said Kakazi. All of the anger Naruto had was now replaced with sadness. Tamari sighed as she watched Naruto. He looks so sad, having three of your friends beaten up in the same day has got to put anyone down in the dumps. Tamari froze at her own thoughts. Not that I care. Hum. Why does Tamari look so sad? And why is she staring at Naruto with those eyes? Unless, I don't believe it. My sister has a crush on that idiot and she doesn't even know it. Either that or she's in denial, thought Konkuro. You should feel honored Naruto, you were one of the people he wanted to fight, right up there with Neji and Sasuke, said Kakashi. Naruto eyed the floor sadly. He wanted to fight me. But I'm no genius, I'm not a ninja prodigy, I don't even have a bloodline. So why would he want to fight me? Naruto started to go up the stairs but when he reached the top Konkuro grabbed him by the scuff of his jacket. Now you listen to me ya moron. 
If you know what's good for you you'll stay away from my sister, said Konkuro. Huh? Konkuro let go of him and started to head down the stairs. I'm watching you, said Konkuro. Naruto stood there for a moment with a very confused expression on his face. Did I miss something? shouted Naruto. Naruto heard an explosion and saw that Choji had been defeated. Well I know I missed the fight anyways, said Naruto. The third started another speech on why the next part of the exam was going to be a month away, but Naruto wasn't really paying attention. Too much had happened to him in one day. He figured that maybe should visit the hospital just to make sure his friends were okay, that way he wouldn't be staying up all night worrying. Naruto grumbled through the hallways of the hospital. Stupid nurses wouldn't let him visit Sasuke, but at least they told him where the rest of his friends were, so he decided to move on to the next of his injured friends, Hanada. He luckily found her awake, he supposed Hyugas were fast healers. Hey Hanada, said Naruto. Hanada blushed brightly from being caught off guard. Nn Naruto kun. W what are you doing here? asked Hanada. Well, a lot of our friends got hurt during the preliminaries, so I thought I'd come by and visit. How are you feeling? asked Naruto. Sore. The doctors say that I will have to stay here two weeks top, said Hanada. Naruto winced. Ouch. Well, I can't say that I'm surprised. There was no excuse for what Neji did, even if it was a fight, said Naruto. Hanada hung her head sadly. But your fight was still awesome, Hanada, said Naruto. Hanada's head bolted up. He kept insulting you and knocking you down, but you just kept getting up. You were awesome, said Naruto. Hanada's blush deepened. He thinks I'm awesome? And Hanada, I promise you, Hanada snapped out of her thoughts and gave Naruto her full undivided attention. I will beat Neji and show him just what a failure can do, said Naruto. A clearing of the throat interrupted their conversation before it could dwell any further. I hope I'm not interrupting anything, said Kurenai. This time both Hanada and Naruto blushed. And no, you're not, stuttered Naruto. Naruto I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. I have some things I need to discuss with Hanada, said Kurenai. Oh well okay, see ya around Hanada, said Naruto. Oh before you go Naruto I wanted to ask you something. What's Aruka's favorite food? asked Kurenai. A miso ramen I guess, said Naruto. I mean besides ramen, said Kurenai. Well I don't know, he only takes me out for ramen, said Naruto. Sigh. Thanks anyways Naruto, said Kurenai. Naruto shrugged and left while Kurenai turned to Hanada. Now Hanada, what would you think of a double date, me and Aruka, you and Naruto, asked Kurenai. Hanada did a full body blush and fainted backwards. That's what I thought, said Kurenai. Elsewhere, Naruto had spotted Kiba. Ha ha. I kicked your butt, said Naruto. Shut up, Naruto, growled Kiba. I'll leave you to lick your wounds, said Naruto. Naruto walked down the hall to see several doctors leave a room all very depressed. He took a peek in to see Lee looking very depressed. He guessed they had just told him the news. Hey Lee, said Naruto sadly. Lee saw Naruto but continued to hang his head. Why? asked Naruto. Why what? Why did I do something so reckless? asked Lee. No. Why did you want to fight me? I'm no genius, I don't have some sort of bloodline which gives me an unfair advantage. So why? asked Naruto. Because your type of strength is different than Neji's or Sasuke's but still just as powerful. You gained your strength through blood, sweat, and tears. I can easily relate to this and would gladly pit my own strength against to see who has gone farther," said Lee. Naruto smirked. Thanks Lee, you're an okay guy. Ya yeah, no, I don't care what the doctors say. I have feeling I haven't seen the last of you out there," said Naruto. He held out his fist in a typical friendship manner. Pound it. Ow. I said pound not punch it, shouted Naruto. I apologize, this is my first time doing a friendship tap thingy said Lee. Naruto held his hand tenderly. We'll work on that some other time. I just need to see Ten Ten now. Hang in there Lee, said Naruto. Lee nodded firmly. Naruto went down the hall to the last room on the left where he saw Ten Ten in bandages eating some hospital food in bed. Wow Ten Ten, out of all the people I've visited you look the healthiest, said Naruto. Naruto. Ten Ten startled by Naruto appearance accidentally flung her milk carton which somehow ended up hitting Naruto in the face. 
Ow. I knew you were a dangerous opponent with weapons but I didn't know you could throw such a mean milk carton, joked Naruto. Ten Ten blushed at doing such an embarrassing action. Why was it that every time he was around that she turned into such a klutz? S sorry. Apologized Ten Ten. It's okay, but I didn't expect you to be in the middle of eating, said Naruto. Yeah well I love a free meal. I only had a few cuts and bruises despite the rough landing. I'm going to be released today, said Ten Ten. Wow. That's great news, don't know how your father is going to take you losing though, said Naruto. Oh don't worry about him, he's pretty forgiving if you gave it your all, said Ten Ten. She put the tray aside and got out of bed. Walk me home, asked Ten Ten. Uh sure, why not? Naruto walked down the hall with Ten Ten. He couldn't help but feel uneasy for some reason, almost as if she was up to something. But from what he knew about Ten Ten she wouldn't do anything to him, would she? You know Naruto, we really should hang out sometime. Like go to the mall or something, said Ten Ten. Mall? Wait, we have a mall. Since when do ninja villages need malls? asked Naruto. Ten Ten giggled. Even ninjas need a mall, Naruto, said Ten Ten. Naruto and Ten Ten had finally reached the stairs. Well, I suppose you have a point, Minnie, said Naruto. Ten Ten smiled playfully. If I'm Minnie, then will you be my Mickey? asked Ten Ten with a wink. Naruto, completely caught off by such a statement, slipped and fell down the stairs. Ow. Oh. Damn. Ouch. Stairs. Ow. R. Ouch. Evil. Ow. Shouted Naruto. The cries of pain were finally silenced when Naruto reached the bottom. Ten Ten tenderly leaned over the railing. Naruto? I'm okay. Called Naruto. It was a good thing he was in a hospital, he felt like he needed one. Naruto and Ten Ten finally arrived at the mall that was much to Naruto's surprise, a lot bigger than he thought. Are you sure you're alright? asked Ten Ten. Don't worry about it. I heal fast, and I mean ridiculously fast, said Naruto. Oh another bloodline thing huh? asked Ten Ten. Ah uh, yeah let's go with that, said Naruto. Out of the corner of her eye Ten Ten spotted an ice cream shop. Hey Naruto, what's your favorite flavored ice cream? asked Ten Ten. I don't know, I've never had any before, said Naruto. Ten Ten looked at Naruto as if a second head had instantly sprouted out of his neck. What? I've only known one ice cream shop and the lady who owned it would always come at me with a broom if I got anywhere near it, said Naruto. Why would she do that? asked Ten Ten. Naruto put a hand lightly on his stomach. That's a long story, said Naruto. Ten Ten frowned. There must have a lot more to Naruto than what was on the surface. Naruto, I want you to stay right here. I'll be right back, said Ten Ten. Ten Ten ran into the ice cream store, leaving a confused Naruto behind. So, you thinking about telling her? asked Alu. I don't know, maybe. How's having to put up with Kyubi like? asked Naruto. Oh, I'm having lots of fun poking fun at him. The fact that he was a high and mighty demon now sealed inside someone, inferior to him is the most aggravating thing in the world to him. Glad you're enjoying yourself. Ten Ten came back with two chocolate ice cream cones, she handed one to Naruto. Here. I figure if you're going to have your first ice cream cone the flavor might as well be chocolate, said Ten Ten. Tea thanks Ten Ten, said Naruto. Tamari sighed to herself in the apartment she was sharing with her brothers and sensei. Her thoughts kept drifting back to the preliminaries with the words Naruto said and the look he gave her. Where does he get off? Why should he care what does or doesn't happen to me? But more importantly, why do I care? Tamari started to hit head against her folded up fan. Why? Bonk. Can't. Bonk. I. Bonk. Get. Bonk. Him. Bonk. Out. Bonk. Of. Bonk. My. Bonk. Head. Bonk. Gara entered the room and raised an eyebrow at his sister's actions. Why is she doing that? asked Gara. Who knows, girls are weird, said Konkuro. Agreed. Tamari rubbed her now red marked forehead. Ow. I gave myself a headache, said Tamari. Tamari got up and started to walk towards the door. Now where are you going? asked Konkuro. To get an ice pack, and then for a walk, said Tamari. Naruto licked his chops now finished with his ice cream, 
he had a nice time eating his ice cream and getting to now 10-10 better. Well Naruto it's been fun but I really need to get going. If I'm not home before curfew dad'll blow a gasket, said 10-10. Well if you really have to go, said Naruto. Yeah, but let's do this again sometime, said 10-10. Uh yeah, sure, okay, said Naruto. Naruto waved goodbye to 10-10 as she started to leave. I think she likes you, said Ilu. Nah, girl like her wouldn't want a guy like me. She just probably wants a sane friend, said Naruto. Well as long as you're here you might as well try to find some new clothes that can stretch. I suppose you're right. I sure am going to miss my orange jumpsuit though, said Naruto. UG. Why do you even wear that tacky thing? It's not suitable for a ninja, it's like you're saying, hey, here I am, kill me. It's a suit someone notices by force, said Alu. Exactly. It's true that I'm often sent hateful glares my way but I'm often ignored coldly too. With my orange jumpsuit they have no choice but to notice me. I never thought of it like that. Naruto started wandering around the mall looking for a clothes store that would have what he'd need. Naruto? Naruto turned to see Ino obviously surprised to see him. Ino. What are you doing here? Asked Naruto. Ino looked at him with half-lidded eyes. It's a mall, Naruto. Did you actually expect for me not to be here? Asked Ino. I guess you have a point there. Said Naruto. So what are you doing here? Asked Ino. Oh I need a new outfit that can stretch to replace my jumpsuit. I'm afraid it's just not cutting it anymore. Said Naruto. About time, that thing is way beyond tacky. Said Ino. See? The smart blonde girl agrees with me. Said Elu. The smart blonde girl agrees with me, mocked Naruto. Anyways, do you know of any stores that have clothes that'll stretch to ridiculous lengths? Asked Naruto. Oh. I know just the store, said Ino. Ino grabbed his arm and started to drag him over to store. This store has a knack for having clothes that are both fashionable and functional, said Ino. Ino went looking through some of the men's shirts trying to find a suitable shirt for Naruto. Um Ino. You don't have to help me this much, said Naruto. Yes, I do. You have absolutely no fashion sense, said Ino. An anger vein appeared on Naruto's head. Excuse me, asked Naruto. Come on, Naruto. I don't want us all to suffer due to your poor choices, said Ino. No wonder Sasuke never chose her, thought Naruto. Ino put a number of clothes articles and started pushing him towards a changing room. Trust me, I'm repaying a favor here said Eno, favor. Before he could finish Eno pushed him in and closed the curtains. Naruto grumbled to himself as he started to put on the clothes Eno gave him. What did you mean favor? asked Naruto. Well thanks to you, I'm starting to notice some other boys, and they are definitely noticing me. I've already set up for four dates next week, said Eno. That's great, knew you'd find somebody, said Naruto. Naruto sighed. He had to disagree with the clothes Ino picked out for him he thought he looked like Sasuke, he shuddered involuntarily. Okay I'm coming out, but I don't think black is a good color for me, and I need a bigger size, this shirt clings too much, said Naruto. Naruto could hear Ino's foot tap impatiently as he opened the curtains. Ino's jaw dropped. Naruto had pecs, abs, even a six pack. He had more muscles than anyone she had ever seen. You have muscles. You have muscles. Who said you could you have muscles? shouted Ino. Um, no one, said Naruto. Ino shook herself out of her stupor. Damn Naruto. I didn't know you were training so hard, said Ino. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the most noticeable features of a werewolf, said Elu. Naruto scratched the back of his neck shyly. Naruto decided he should probably change the subject before Ino started asking too many questions. Hey, look, they have orange clothing said Naruto. No, no more orange, said Ino, but I like orange. Orange isn't your color, you should try black, said Ino. Blue. Deal. Ino smiled to herself, she had just done the citizens of Konoha a huge favor by getting Naruto to try on a different color of clothes. No reason why they should all have to suffer due to Naruto's poor fashion sense. Just make sure the stuff can stretch, said Naruto. Don't worry because of some of the jutsus our ninjas do they've made sure these things can stretch about a mile at least, said Ino. Ino picked out several blue clothes for him including a couple muscle shirts. 
Kuranai smiled as she walked down the streets. She had finally gotten Hanada to agree to a double date, of course the poor girl fainted five separate times first. So now all she had to do was arrange the date with Aruka. However, there was one little problem that she hadn't taken into account. This was one of the few parts of the village that she hadn't been to. This meant only one thing. I am completely lost. Naruto and several cage bushins walked out of the clothing store each one grumbling. Eno I don't think we really needed to buy this much clothes, said the original. Nonsense, there's no such thing as too much new clothes, said Eno. This caused the cage bushins to roll their eyes. Naruto heard a growl come from Eno's stomach. Hungry huh? Well don't worry I'm sure we could find a food court around here somewhere, said Naruto. No thanks Naruto, I'm on a diet. I have to watch my figure, I'm already fat enough as it is, said Eno. Eno was surprised to see that she was on the receiving end of a deadly glare from Naruto. W what? You are not fat. Do you have any idea how many malnourished women I've seen in town, and they still think they're fat? I could see their rib cages, they were like skeletons with skins on. You're beautiful just the way you are Eno, never let anyone tell you any different, shouted Naruto. Of course Naruto being the knucklehead that he has had no idea that he just called Eno beautiful. This got a very surprised look from Eno. It's one thing to go out on a diet when you have something like a gut but it's another to go starving yourself, said Naruto. Eno stood for a moment or two before shaking herself out of her stupor. PFT. Like you're one to talk, Mr. I eat nothing but ramen, said Eno. Hey speaking of ramen we should probably find a ramen stand somewhere around here, said Naruto. Naruto there's no ramen stand here in the mall, said Eno. Naruto stood dumbfounded for a second. What kind of upside down mall is this? shouted Naruto. Hanada stared at her sheets. She couldn't believe it, she and Kurenai might be going out with Naruto and Aruka. It was a dream come true, well except for the part about Kurenai and Aruka, she hadn't seen that one coming. Hanada remembered the first time she met Naruto, flashback. Six-year-old Hanada was sobbing on the grass until she heard a voice. Hey, whatcha crying for? asked the voice. Hanada looked up to see a six-year-old Naruto. Hanada sniffled for a second. T those mean boys took took the new dolly my mommy gave me, sobbed Hanada. Well that's not nice, you stay right here, I'll be right back so don't move, said Naruto. Five minutes later Naruto was running from a couple of boys drenched in paint. He ran over to Hanada, put something in her arms. Hanada stared at the gift she had just received. It was the very doll the bullies had taken from her, and while they were soaked in paint there didn't appear to be a single drop on her doll. Look there he is. Come back here you demon brat, shouted one of the bullies. Here, hurried Naruto. Naruto ran as fast as his little legs could take him as older boys ran after him. However, only one thing stuck in Hanada's mind. He got my dolly back, thought Hanada end flashback. And now I might be going out on with him. It's almost too good to be true. Gasp. What am I going to wear? Naruto waved goodbye to Ino as he and his clones started to head back. Well that was fun, said a clone. I guess, but did you see the way she was looking at me? It was as if I just sprouted another head to her or something, said the original. Naruto suddenly heard a crash followed by something falling to the ground. God fucking damn it, shouted a voice. You guys take the new clothes home, I'll check it out, said the original. They nodded and went on their way. Naruto headed over to where he heard the crash and saw Tamari on the ground with twigs in her hair. Her fan hand landed a good distance away and she herself looked like she landed in a painful position. Tamari? Tamari looked up and flinched at who she saw. Oh it's you. Said Tamari. Need a hand? Asked Naruto. Tamari glared defiantly at him. No. Tamari struggled to get up for a moment but found that she couldn't. Yes. She admitted. Naruto held out his hand which she grabbed firmly. As Naruto helped her up, she tried to get some of the twigs out with her free hand. So what happened to you? Asked Naruto. Tamari mumbled something incoherent. Come again? Asked Naruto. I crashed into the tree, alright? Said Tamari. That kind of seems like an amateur mistake for a windmistress, said Naruto. Hey. My mind was, elsewhere. Said Tamari. A Tamari? What? 
You can let go of my hand anytime ya no, said Naruto. Tamari looked down to see that she had never let go of his hand when she was being helped up. She let go as if Naruto's hand were on fire, and Tamari started Naruto. Naruto raised towards Temari's face which started to blush furiously. Oh my god, is he going to try to kiss me? thought Tamari. Naruto pulled a twig out of her hair. Missed one, said Naruto. Tamari face faulted. Hey am um, you okay? asked Naruto. Just leave. I'm feeling confused enough as it is, shouted Tamari. Naruto blinked in confusion. Confused? What's there to feel confused about? asked Naruto. Forget it. I'll leave, said Tamari. Tamari stomped over to where her fan was only to trip over a branch that fell out of the tree that she hit. Is it just me or is there always a lot of gravity involved whenever I'm with women? thought Naruto. Naruto winced as he saw the wound on Temuri's leg caused by her little tumble. That looks pretty bad. Here let me help, said Naruto. Naruto took his sleeve and ripped half of it off. Tamari then decided to show Naruto her impression of a fish with her mouth opening and closing. What? Look I'm getting rid of this thing so it doesn't matter if I rip it. I'm not gapping about that you idiot, it's your arm. Naruto looked at his arm and Tamari, what about it? I never realized it because of the jumpsuit but if your arm is any indication, you must actually be pretty ripped, said Tamari. Naruto grinned sheepishly and started to scratch the back of his head. Ah shucks, you're going to make me blush. But enough about me let's wrap up that leg, said Naruto. Get fresh and I'll kill you, said Tamari, got it. Tamari forced down a blush as Naruto started to wrap her leg. There we go, you can walk and everything right, asked Naruto. Tamari stood up and smirked. Good, well I really ought to be heading home now. Try not to crash into any more trees, okay. I'll see you later. Tamari scoffed at the remark but couldn't help but smirk to herself as she watched Naruto's retreating figure. Kiba looked at sister questionably, she'd been in serious thought for over an hour. Uh sis? Is there something wrong? asked Kiba. Oh nothing, I'm just wondering how I should ask out a certain guy, that's all, said Hannah. A guy? Who is it? asked Kiba. Oh it's your old teacher from the academy, Aruka, said Hannah. What? You can't date my old sensei, shouted Kiba. For your information Gaki, I can date whoever I want, said Hannah. But why him? asked Kiba. Kiba I'm going to let you in on a little family secret. The women of our family have always been attracted to men with fatherly instincts. And I only just recently discovered how much of that Aruka has. Can't believe I've never noticed him that way before. Well I'm off to check my wardrobe, said Hannah. Kiba covered his eyes with the palm of his hand. This is so wrong, said Kiba. Naruto yawned as he plopped himself down on his bed. Night had come awfully early. What a day, I am totally wiped, said Naruto. Just as Naruto was about to close his eyes he heard a distant scream. Tonight's never going to end is it? asked Naruto. It's alright for me to check it out in my hybrid form as long as no one knows who I am right? That's right. That's all I needed to hear. Kin was running for her life, she couldn't believe it her fellow sound nins were trying to kill her. She turned into an alley only to find a dead end. She turned around only to see Tuyuya and the rest of the elite sound nins. I don't know what you're so fucking upset about. It is a friggin honor to give your life to Orochimaru-sama, said Tuyuya. No, no, no. I don't want to die, shouted Kin. Well that's too fucking bad, bitch. Orochimaru-sama always gets what he wants, said Tuyuya. However, their advancement was halted by a blood curdling howl. D, did you hear that? Shut your fat ass up, we got work to do, said Tuyuya. However, the mighty elite, sound nins screamed as a silver furred werewolf landed in between them and their victim. There was a group gulp as the werewolf started to growl at them. The tossed a trash can at Lunar Beast only to have it sliced to ribbons by werewolf claws. Uh, maybe we should get out of here. Quiet chicken dick. We aren't running just because. However, Tuyuya changed her mind as the werewolf roared in her face. Let's get the hell out of here, screamed Tuyuya. Naruto turned to Kin who pressed her back to the wall. You okay? asked Naruto. Kin's eyes rolled to the back of her head and she fell to the ground in a faint. Hey I was right. A lot of gravity is involved whenever I'm with women. 
I got a feeling those bozos aren't going to give up on trying to kill her, can't have that, thought Naruto. Naruto thought for a moment. I know. The old man'll know what to do, but I'd better change back, don't want to give the old man a heart attack. Naruto changed back and picked Kin up bridal style. The Hokage grumbled to himself as he was only halfway through his paperwork despite the late hour. The natural enemy of a Hokage, paperwork, grumbled Serutobi. Suddenly a blur entered the room. Needless to say Serutobi was surprised to see Naruto with a young woman in his arms. We have a problem. Said Naruto. Well Naruto, I must admit this is a most unexpected. Mind explaining to me why you have brought an unconscious girl to my office? Asked Serutobi. She was attacked. By ninjas from her own village no less, said Naruto. This caused the old man's eyes to widen in surprise. Quickly, put her down in the chair in front of my desk, said Serutobi. Naruto did as he was told as the Hokage came to look Kin over. She has no injuries on her. I take it she merely fainted from seeing one of your werewolf forms, said Serutobi. Naruto froze. You, how, Naruto, the Yandaimi was both my successor and my predecessor. Do you really think I would pass on my title without knowing everything about him? Minato only let his most precious people in on what he truly was. I felt honored and humbled he would let me in on his secret. So it's only natural that you would be a werewolf too, said Serutobi. Naruto gave a small smile. Being a werewolf is kind of a rush. But it also feels natural, especially in a forest. But let's focus on our little friend here, said Naruto. Yes, why don't you explain what happened from the beginning, said Serutobi. Iruka yawned as he heard a knock on his door. Who in their right mind would want to be trying to reach me at this hour? asked Iruka. Iruka opened his door to see an out of breath Kurenai. Finally, I've been lost for hours. It took me forever to get back into this section of Konoha. Anyways, Aruka you're probably wondering what I'm doing here. Aruka's eyes were more than halfway closed and he seemed to be wobbling where he stood. You're half asleep aren't you? Asked Kurenai. Aruka grunted in response. A playful smile crossed her lips. I know a way to wake you up, said Kurenai. Aruka grunted once again. Kurenai gave a small peck to his cheek. Aruka's face immediately started to glow bright red. KKK Kurenai, stuttered Aruka. Knew it would work. Kurenai giggled. Aruka, now fully awake, gave his undivided attention to Kurenai. What are you doing here? asked Aruka. Kurenai's playful smile made a reappearance. I have a proposal for you, Aruka kun, said Kurenai. Aruka's eyes widened at being referred to as kun, and gulped. Well Naruto, it's late. Thank you for filling me in on what happened but I think I will take it from here. I'm also afraid we're going to have to let her in on your secret of being a werewolf, said Serutobi. What? Why? shouted Naruto. Naruto, she's bound to find out sooner or later. But don't worry, I won't let her tell anyone. Now go get some rest, said Serutobi. Naruto felt a little uneasy about letting a total stranger in on his secret but he trusted the old man. All right, I just hope you know what you're doing, said Naruto. Naruto started to head towards the door, today was a really long day and he needed to hit the sack badly. Oh Naruto before I forget, there has been something I've been meaning to give you, said Serutobi. Serutobi walked over to Naruto and handed him an envelope. Inside is a letter from your father along with the keys and a map to his old household. I was asked to give these to you when certain traits surfaced, said Serutobi. Naruto gave a sad smile as he took the letter. Thanks, old man. Outside, Naruto opened the envelope to find everything inside the Hokage said there would be keys, letter, map, the whole kit, and caboodle. Naruto decided he would read the letter when he would get to the household. That way, he would be sure that only he was reading it and not somebody who was hiding too. So he was a little paranoid show him someone who wasn't in some shape or form. He followed the map he was given for about an hour. Just when he was about to give up and go back to his apartment, he had finally found it. Naruto looked up at his father's old household, and up, and up. Holy crap! This isn't a household this is a friggin' mansion, said Naruto. It was true, the house that had been left to him was more like a mansion. Naruto made a cage bushin and sent it back to his apartment to retrieve his things. Well might as well see what's inside, said Naruto.
Naruto walked up to the door and unlocked it with one of the keys. Inside Naruto wasn't surprised at how dusty it was, it was obvious no one had been inside for many years. Naruto closed the door behind him and decided now was a good time to read that letter. Naruto opened it up and smiled at the fact that it was a bit of a long letter. Dear Naruto, if you're reading this then my plan worked and the Kyubi is sealed within you and that I am dead. You must know that I never wanted this for you, to be born an orphan. To experience the pain of being alone while watch parents comfort their children on a daily basis. I know how the villagers are probably treating you, try not to judge them too harshly, they are only acting out of pain. Both myself and your mother would give anything to be there for you, to give you the love you so rightly deserve. But if you're anything like your old man you won't let anything stand in the way of your dreams. So keep a stiff upper lip and walk with pride, show them that it will take more than a few harsh words and cold glares to keep down an Uzumaki. Now if you excuse me, I need to show a certain fox why it's not a healthy idea to mess with the village hidden in the leaves. Your loving father, Minato Uzumaki Naruto was confused, he felt happier than he had ever been before and yet tears were streaming down his face. They simply wouldn't stop. Naruto held the piece of paper tightly to his chest. Naruto had precious people in his life but now he also had a precious item, the letter from his father. He would make sure to cherish it always. Naruto wiped away the tears as he tucked the letter into his pocket. Well, I can't just stand around and cry all night. Time to find a room, said Naruto. His cage bushin soon arrived with most of Naruto's belongings. Naruto put on his PJS and his sleeping cap leaving the rest of his belongings on the floor. After a little exploring Naruto finally found a bedroom and plopped down onto it. It didn't take long for sleep to overcome him. Naruto found himself once again in front of Kayubi's cage. Only this time he found Alu torturing the once mighty demon. Fuzzy Wuzzy was fox, Fuzzy Wuzzy had no socks. And when the Yandaimi came out to play, Fuzzy Wuzzy got sealed away. Mocked Alu. I hate you. Oh what did I ever do to deserve this? Asked Kayubi. Want me to break out the list? Asked Alu. No, not that stupid list again. I can't take it, shouted Kayubi. Naruto cleared his throat to the attention of the spirit guide wolf. Oh hello, cub, said Alu. Looks more like a kit to me, said Kayubi. He's a wolf, not a fox. Come Naruto, there is still much to discuss, said Alu. As Naruto and Alu started to leave Kayubi began to voice his displeasure. Hey! You losers can't just the mighty Kayubi no. Shut up! Nobody cares what you have to say. Now leave us alone or else I'll turn your cage pink, said Alu. You wouldn't dare, try me, challenged Alu. Naruto was amazed to see that the mighty demon started to pout. That's what I thought. Come along Naruto-kun, said Alu. Naruto followed Alu out of the room and away from Kayubi. Naruto and Alu entered another room that Naruto didn't think existed. Naruto, I think there's something you need to see. You see your father came from a clan of werewolves, and while they were powerful they were also blinded by foolish pride. What I am about to show you is a shadow of your father's past. The memory I secretly witness on the day your father turned his back on the clan. Said Alu. The room instantly started to shimmer until it changed into a grand hall where several old men were sitting at the end of the room. Why's everything in black and white? Asked Naruto. I'm a wolf, I'm colored blind, cut me some slack, said Alu. Fair enough, said Naruto. The doors instantly slammed open as a man that looked like an older and more matured Naruto entered the room. Is that my father? Asked Naruto. Yes, and you were about to witness one of his defining moments said Alu. Father! shouted the man. The eldest of the old foggies glared at the man. What is the meaning of this, Minato? Why don't you tell me? What's this rubbish about the family not accepting my engagement? asked Minato. Minato, you are my son and a werewolf prodigy, but I simply cannot accept your engagement to a, a, a human. Irashi's fist tightened. That's what this is all about. Because she's human. Because she wasn't born a werewolf? The Kazamas have always married into other werewolf clans. To marry a human is an insult to us all, you should have just found a nice she-wolf. At this point Minato was trembling with anger. I can't believe you, believe this clan. If this is what it means to be a Kazama then I don't want anything to do with it any longer, shouted Minato. 
The old man's eyes widened in realization at what his son was saying. You don't mean, that's right, if you let her marry into our family then I'll just have to marry into hers, I don't want to do anything associated with this clan anymore. Minato Kazama no longer exists, now there is only Minato Uzumaki. Minato started leave but paused and gave his father one last look. You'd better watch out, because from now on there'll be two werewolf clans, the Kazamas and the Uzumakis, said Minato. I showed you this because I thought you had a right to know what happened to your father's side of the family. Except Minato they were all killed in a clan civil war. But I wanted you to know how much your father sacrificed himself for the women he loved and the child that was within her, said Ilu. Naruto gave a sad smile. The man just kept on giving, said Naruto. Yes but now I think it is time for you to wake up, said Ilu. Why? asked Naruto. Ilu smiled smugly. You're about to have a visitor. Knock. 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 Naruto groggily sat up. Guess she was right, said Naruto. Naruto tiredly started to walk towards the front door. Knock. 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 I'm coming. I'm coming, called Naruto. Naruto opened the door to find Kin staring at her feet timidly. The gears in Naruto's head stopped spinning for a moment as he saw the ex soundnin standing in front of him. It took a kick start from Alu to get them going again. What are you doing here? asked Naruto. Hokage sent me here because he said that you were supposed to be my guardian during my time here and that your place would be my safe house, said Kin. Naruto sighed to himself. Terrific. But these are desperate times so come on in, said Naruto. Naruto raised an eyebrow when Kin didn't come in. It looked like she was staring at something, to be more accurate his pajamas, or so he thinks. Okay so ever since his werewolf abilities became active his PJS were a bit, smaller, but that didn't mean she had to stare with some drool coming out of her mouth. Well the drool, he didn't know what the drool was about but point was he had enough. Naruto snapped his fingers a couple of times in front of her face, snapping her out of her stupor. You coming or what? asked Naruto. I'm all right, said Kin. I'm still new to this house myself so we're going to have to explore to find you a room, said Naruto. As Naruto and Kin tried to find another bedroom Naruto couldn't help but feel Kin's occasional stare. Why do you keep staring at me like that? asked Naruto. Hokage-sama told me about everything. From Kayubi, to the cold stairs, to you being the werewolf that saved me. How can you keep smiling after all that's happened to you? asked Kin. Any idiot can have a great amount of outer strength, but it takes a man to have a great amount of inner strength, said Naruto. To say that Kin was impressed was an understatement, she was amazed at how much inner strength and bravery Naruto had. Hey look, we finally found an empty room. Okay, I'm right down the hall so if you know who tries to break in and get you, you can come down and get me. Or if you just need to find the bathroom or something, said Naruto. Kin nodded and entered the room. Naruto went back to his own room and crawled into bed. Naruto tried to fall asleep for about an hour but it was to no avail. It was one of those rare nights when one was too tired to sleep. Just when he was about to try again the door to his room opened. Kin? Is that you? Asked Naruto. Naruto didn't even turn to look at her he was so tired. Why yes, I was just wondering if it would be okay if I slept with you tonight. You see, my room is just so dark and. And after everything that's happened today you can't help but feel as those creeps are watching and waiting in every shadow. Asked Naruto. Yes. That's it exactly, said Kin. Okay, you can sleep here tonight. I don't blame you for not wanting to sleep alone. Today must have been pretty scary, so it's all right. The bed is more than big enough for two. But you don't have to worry about those jerks anymore. I won't ever let them hurt you, said Naruto. Kin thanked him and crawled into bed. Naruto was just thankful that there was more than enough room in the bed, thus avoiding any awkward contact. Naruto woke up the next morning but with a confused look on his face. Something doesn't feel quite right, said Naruto. It took Naruto a moment or two to figure out what was wrong. And when he did his face turned atomic red. Kin was wearing his old orange jumpsuit, minus the sleeve. But more importantly she was holding onto his torso like a giant teddy bear looking quite content. Naruto's blush deepened as she started to snuggle into his chest. Okay, time to end this. Kin, wake up said Naruto. He shook her shoulder a couple of times waking her up. 
Kin looked around her surroundings groggily until she realized what she was doing. She leapt out of bed and away from Naruto with a heavy blush on her face. Two things. First what are you doing wearing my old jumpsuit? Second why were you using me as a teddy bear back there? Asked Naruto. Uh ha -huh, um well you see, I didn't have any pajamas left and I found this jumpsuit lying in the middle of the floor in front of the front door, said Kin. I guess I can buy that. Now what about happened 15 seconds ago? Asked Naruto. Oh. That. Well uh I tend to um hold things in the middle of the night, close to me, said Kin. Kin mentally winced. The truth was that for some reason she felt safe with him, but she just told a really far-fetched lie. What kind of complete and utter moron would believe that? Who? Who? Okay, I'll believe that. Said Naruto. Kin blinked in confusion, he bought it. Now that's over with I think it's time for me to get dressed. Said Naruto. Kin, catching the hint that he wanted to change in private, started to back out the door. Right, I'll just a wait for you downstairs. Said Kin. It's a funny thing walking backwards, you can never see where you're going so you're most likely to. Ow, trip. There's that gravity again, said Naruto. Naruto was now dressed in a blue muscle shirt wearing matching blue jeans. Well I'm off. I have to visit Sasuke at the hospital, train for the Chunin exams, pick up some groceries, and do a whole bunch of other crap, said Naruto. Naruto was about to leave when something caught his attention, a very loud something. Naruto-sama, shouted Kin. Naruto froze. Sama. Naruto turned around and saw that Kin was bowing to him as if he were his new Orochimaru. Naruto let out a yelp of surprise and jumped a couple of steps back. What do you think you're doing? shouted Naruto. Naruto-sama, I owe my life to you and because of this I shall serve you for the remainder of my days, said Kin. Many of you are probably wondering why Kin didn't do this last night when she first arrived. Well, it would have been a little embarrassing for her to do right off the bat. Plus, she wasn't exactly sure Naruto was worth it having not known him very well, for all she knew he could secretly be another Orochimaru. But now, after getting to know him last night, she was sure that he was the one person that was truly worth bowing down to. Now, cut that out. You're making a scene, said Naruto. But Naruto sama, and stop calling me that. I'm no lord and I'm certainly not a Hokage, well, at least not yet, anyways. Look. I'm going to go now, you stay here and watch the house. When I return I expect for you to not be bowing to me," said Naruto. What do you mean Sasuke is not taking any visitors? shouted Naruto. Please keep your voice down sir, this is a hospital. I'm sorry to say that Mr. Uchiha's condition is still too critical," said the nurse. Naruto growled. Oi what's all the noise about? asked a voice. Naruto turned and saw Kakashi reading his orange book. Kakashi sensei. Just who I need. I need you to train me for upcoming finals, said Naruto. Sorry, Naruto, but I'm afraid I'm going to be too busy to train you, said Kakashi. Yeah, right. You're probably just saying that because you're really going to train Sasuke, aren't you? shouted Naruto. No, I just have some important business to take care of, but I didn't forget about you either and found you a teacher, said Kakashi. Ebisu walked down the hall adjusting his glasses. That would be me. Oh hell no, said Naruto. They're a problem, asked Kakashi. I know this guy and I hate him. You say that you're not really going to not train Sasuke, but I can smell that you're lying, said Naruto. Kakashi raised an eyebrow. Smell? Forget about that. Point is, you're a bad teacher. No teacher shows favoritism of one student over the others, even Aruka sensei will tell you that, said Naruto. To say that Kakashi was stunned would be an understatement, he was close to shocked. Naruto never acted this way, at least not to him. You're probably going to end up teaching him some super cool jutsu, like maybe that Chidori thingy, said Kakashi. Naruto saw Kakashi sweat. Ha! Huh. I hit the nail on the head didn't I? Well what are you going to do after that? Are you going to teach me a jutsu just as good, or what about Sakura-san, she needs the help most of all, said Naruto. Kakashi was speechless, he honestly couldn't think of anything to say in his defense. Just so you know Kakashi sensei, you have three students not one, shouted Naruto. Kakashi fell over backwards from the force of Naruto yell. I'm out of here but I think you should know that maybe you're the one that needs to go back to the academy, because you obviously don't know how to balance a team, said Naruto. 
Naruto stormed out of hospital not caring where he went, just as long as it was away from Kakashi. Naruto. Shouted a voice. Off in the distance Naruto spotted the man he once called Sensei running towards him. This man also had another name, Iruka. Iruka stopped in front of his former student out of breath. Sensei. What is it? Why are you out of breath? Asked Naruto. Tiyuya gulped. Why'd I have to be the fucking retard to tell him? The rest of you were pissing your pants as much as I was, said Tiyuya. Just do it. They pushed Tiyuya into the room where Orochimaru was waiting for one of them to report on the assassination of Kin. Um oh oh Orochimaru sama, stuttered Tiyuya. Orochimaru turned to her with his typical grin. I I I regret to inform that Kin managed to get away, said Tiyuya. Ku 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 ku. I must admit I am surprised that she managed to slip through your fingers, but it is of no matter. Bring me Dosu's body, said Orochimaru. Naruto walked through the streets with his mind on what Aruka had told him. Aruka and himself were supposed to go on a double date with Kurenai and Hanada. He supposed that there were worst girls to go out on a date with. Which had brought him to another matter, Naruto had been thinking a lot of the Hyuga heiress and he didn't know why. True how hurt she got in her fight and how Neji treated her had royally pissed him off. But why was it that he hated seeing her hurt so much? When Naruto had really thought about it, if it were him that had to fight Hanata Naruto wasn't sure he could do it. He wasn't sure why but just couldn't picture himself hitting Hanata. It just seemed, wrong. You there. I will not allow such perversion, shut up. There was the sound of a puff of smoke followed by a man flying overhead. What the, started Naruto. Naruto ran over to the man and saw that it was Ebisu. Ebisu. Who could have? Naruto looked over to the direction from which Ebisu was thrown from. There was only one thing Naruto could say at what he was seeing. Just who the heck are you? And what's up with the giant frog? Shouted Naruto. Naruto pointed to an old man on top of some type of striped toad. The old man's face lit up at the chance for an introduction. Good question. I am the most holy hermit sage of the Mount Myoboku Toads, otherwise known as the Toad Sage, Jiraiya. Pleased to meet ya. Naruto's left eye started to twitch. Fine. Good for you. But why did you do that to him? Asked Naruto. He interfered with my research. Research, I'm a writer, I write novels. Jiraiya pulled out an O2 familiar orange book. Like this one. That's that pervert book that Kakashi sensei won't stop reading, shouted Naruto. Oh. So your sensei is a fan as he? Asked Jiraiya. He won't stop reading it, we can't get him to stop. And if you wrote that perverted junk then you must be an even bigger pervert. Accused Naruto. Wrong. I am no ordinary pervert, I'm a super pervert, said Jiraiya gleefully. Naruto hit his forehead with the palm of his hand. Oh screw this. I've got training to do, said Naruto. Naruto turned around and started walking towards the forest. He had been meaning to develop some jutsus for his werewolf side. What's your hurry, werewolf? Naruto froze and slowly turned to face the perverted sage. But how did you, kid I trained the fourth, you think I don't know a werewolf when I see one? Naruto fell into the hot spring for about the tenth time. Stupid seal. It's making my chakra act all wonky, thought Naruto. Yeah well the worst it's done in here was made Kyubi's cage slightly lopsided. Not even enough to notice. Naruto threw off his shirt. No point of wearing this, said Naruto. Hey kid, focus your chakra for a moment, I need to check on something, said Jiraiya. Naruto shrugged. The old man had agreed to be his sensei until the third part of the chunin exams began. Naruto did as he was told and started to focus his chakra. Aha! Uh -huh. Just as I thought. Come here for a sec, said Jiraiya. Naruto walked over to Jiraiya. Now he's just acting weird, thought Naruto. Jiraiya threw his hands up into the air. Raise your arms up like, bonsai, said Jiraiya. Okay, now he's up to something, thought Naruto. What are you? Five-pronged seal release. Naruto fell to the ground clutching his stomach. Hey it's not lopsided in here anymore, said Elu. Ooh. What did you do to me? I undid Orochimaru damage to your seal. How about a little gratitude huh? If you weren't the spitting image of your father I wouldn't even bother with you, said Jiraiya. Whatever, said Naruto. Well squirt, try it now, said Jiraiya. 
Naruto walked out onto the water without any problems whatsoever. Now it isn't so hard anymore. I guess you're not so bad after all Aero Senen, said Naruto. Don't call me that. Now listen up, we'll continue your training tomorrow, said Jiraiya. Yeah, okay. See you tomorrow, said Naruto. Ambu Black Ops were growing concerned. Serutobi had locked himself in the office after Naruto. Hokage-sama, is everything all right there? asked one of the Anbus. I'm busy finishing up a 12-year experiment. I'm almost done so make sure nobody bothers me under any circumstances. Hi Hokage-sama. Serutobi wiped his brow. Now that they're gone maybe I can continue with my work. Orochimaru is in for the biggest surprise of his life. It's time I corrected my mistake. Naruto walked down the road with his hands in his pants pocket. His thoughts drifted back to the whole double date thing. How the hell was he supposed to go on a double date, he never dated anyone in his entire life. Hey, Naruto. Called a voice. Naruto knew that voice, that was Tenten's voice. She finally reached him and paused to catch her breath. Hey Tenten, what's up? Asked Naruto. You walked right past me without even blinking an eye. What has you distracted so much? Asked Tenten. Tenten had to admit, she was definitely liking what the muscle shirt was wearing er, she means the muscle shirt he was wearing. Not the other way around. Well you see I kind of have to go out on double date and I don't know what to do on it, said Naruto. Tenten's left eye started to twitch. The one thing she hadn't been expecting was competition. She figured that Naruto was there and was going to stay available there for a while, but if she guessed right his availability might be closing fast. If one woman wanted to date him besides herself then it would only be a matter of time before more would also want to date him. If she really wanted to end up with Naruto she was going to have to play hardball. Oh really, with who? Asked the twitching Tenten. Iruka sensei will be dating Kuranai sensei while I'll be dating Hanada, said Naruto. So it was the Hyuga girl, just about everyone knew she had a monster crush on him, maybe more. Everyone but Naruto Uzumaki that is, he was oblivious as a cow in a slaughterhouse. As far as Tenten was concerned she was still in this game. The fact that Kuranai wanted to go out with Iruka seemed a little odd, she always figured she was out of Iruka's class. But Hanada actually gathering the courage needed to date Naruto wasn't something she had expected. So what you're saying is that you have a date coming up and you have no idea what to do on it, correct? I guess, that's sort of it, said Naruto. A plan started to formulate in Tenten's mind. Well Naruto, I think I might be able to help you. Really, how? asked Naruto. I'm going to teach you, now come on, said Tenten. Before Naruto could react, Tenten grabbed his hand and ran off, dragging him the whole way. Anko took another big swig of sake. Damn, that man's elusive. She had been trying to get a hold of Aruka for quite a while now, but he kept escaping from her grasp. Well, you seem to be hitting the sake pretty hard today, said a voice. Anko squinted her eyes to try and see who the blurry visitor was. The image settled into Kakashi reading his perverted orange book. If Anko wasn't so dizzy she would have slugged him for reading that in her presence. Oh, it's you Aero Cyclops, said Anko. Kakashi's sweat dropped. You do know that my other eye is just hidden by. Whatever. What do you want? Asked Anko. Well you seem pretty distracted by something, is anything wrong? Asked Kakashi. Oh it's that Chunin Aruka Amino, I've been trying to score a date with him but he keeps slipping through my fingers. It just doesn't make sense about how a Chunin could be so slippery, said Anko. You mean you don't know? Aruka is still a Chunin but only because he wishes to remain a Chunin. What? If he were to become Junin or higher then he would have to stop working at the academy, and I think we all know how much he loves working there. Kakashi had a point, Aruka did love his job. Wait a minute. How do you know all this? asked Anko. Oh well me, Asuma, and Aruka are poker buddies. Poor Aruka, he can never seem to win a. Eh? Why are you looking at me like that? Anko smiled one of her terrifying smiles at him. If you're friends with him then you can set me up on a date with him, said Anko. Um now let's just hold on here for a second. Anko was about to respond when she suddenly fell to the floor passed out. Saved by the sake, said Kakashi. Tenten pulled Naruto into the ice cream shop that they visited last time. What are we doing here again? Are we getting more ice cream? Asked Naruto. Sort of. Your first lesson is here, said Tenten. She pulled Naruto in and had him take a seat at a table. 
Now stay right here, I'm going to go order us a milkshake, said Tenten. Milkshake? As in non plural? asked Naruto. That's right, now don't move, said Tenten. Naruto swallowed a lump in his throat. After placing an order, Tenten soon sat across from him. Now then, we're here so you can learn how to drink a shake with a lady. Their shake arrived with two straws already inside. All right, now usually, hey, don't drink when I'm talking to you, it's rude. Anyways, like I was saying, it's usually best to take small sips, if you want to take big ones, it's usually best to do it with the girl you're drinking with, said Tenten. This whole speech was making Naruto blush. Another important factor is that when you're taking these sips, stare at the girl, not the drink. Let's try now, shall we? asked Tenten. Naruto's blush deepened. Naruto started to drink a little nervous that Tenten was smiling now that he was forced to stare intently at her face. Kuranai walked into Hanada's room with a smile on her face. Well, I've set it up. Once you get out of here, you'll be on your first date with Naruto, said Kuranai. Hanada smiled bigger than Kuranai ever saw her. I'm so happy. B, but also terribly nervous, B, but in a good way said Hanada. Kuranai smiled. Naruto always did bring out the best in Hanada. Until then, I'll pick out a new outfit for you. Hanada was about to voice her protests when Kuranai cut her off. Don't worry, I'll make sure it's one that both you and Naruto like. Hanada blushed deeply but there was also a smile on her face. Tenten grinned to herself, so far everything was going exactly as planned. Okay, now that we got drinking shakes covered, Next we're going to cover what to do in a movie theater, said Tenten. You mean, well no, we can't go to the theater because I would need to speak and you can't talk during a movie, it's just not done, said Tenten. Then where are we going to do it? asked Naruto. Yes that was the million dollar question for Tenten. It had to be someplace quiet and dark. Quiet because they needed as little interruptions as possible, dark because the movie theater would probably be pretty dark. Aha. Uh -huh. That shed is perfect, said Tenten. The SS shed? asked Naruto. Yeah, come on, said Tenten. She grabbed Naruto by the hand and dragged him over to the shed. So now Naruto was sitting in a shed, alone, in the dark, with Tenten, just the two of them. Um, Tenten. Okay, now pretend we're at a movie theater and hold my hand, said Tenten. What? Just do it, said Tenten. Naruto blushed as he placed his hand on top of hers. Good, now if the girl likes you back she may do this, said Tenten. Tenten turned her hand on its back and laced her fingers with Naruto's. It was a good thing the shed was so dark otherwise Tenten would have seen Naruto's blush deepen. Around the third date or so if she wants she'll let you put your arm around her shoulder. She demonstrated once again by wrapping his arm around her shoulder. Sometimes if the girl really, really likes you she'll let you cop a feel, said Tenten. Tenten heard a loud thud. Naruto. Tenten looked at where Naruto's hand was and realized that she had accidentally gotten him to feel her left breast. Oops. Hanada was brought out of her daydreams of a date with Naruto when she heard a knock on the door. Come in. Called Hanada. Hanada was surprised to see that her visitor was none other than her little sister. Hanabi chan? W. What are you doing here? asked Hanada. Father told me to come here and tell you that he along with the rest of the family are disappointed that you lost a member of the branch family, said Hanabi. Hanada's face fell. Her family always did know how to bring her down, speaking of which. H. Hanabi Chan, I, I need for why you to tell Father S. something. Tell F. Father that oh once I am released I W will be G going on a D date with N. Naruto. Hanabi rolled her eyes. Honestly, I don't see what you see him, he's such an idiot, said Hanabi. Hanada's mood started to sour. She may not be able to stand up for herself, but she would always be able to stand up for Naruto. That, idiot, as you put it is never afraid to be himself and no matter how difficult something is he never gives up. Can you say the same? asked Hanada. Hanabi wasn't sure what to be more surprised about. The fact that her big sister stood up to her or that she didn't stutter once. I want you to remember something Hanabi, today idiot may be tomorrow's Hokage, said Hanada. Hanabi left with a confused look on her face. Kin worked on dusting Naruto's and herself's new household. The blonde boy had earned much more than her respect in her eyes. To her she realized that he was more than a shinobi, more than a demon container, even more than a werewolf. He was, a hero.
She personally thought that Konoha didn't deserve him. She would have been delighted if the two would start a new ninja village together. But that was his decision, not hers. And what else was that the man was forever determined to become Hokage. He was truly remarkable in her eyes. Naruto and Tenten arrived at her house. Now comes the last part. The goodbye kiss, said Tenten. She giggled as she saw Naruto's eye grow to the size of saucers. Tenten is that you? shouted her father. Tenten groaned. Why was it that parents always had the worst timing? Yes dad, shouted back Tenten. Tenten rolled her eyes and turned her attention back to Naruto. Now pucker up and, Tenten did you remember to do your chores? Tenten growled. Can it wait? I'm kind of in the middle something. Now young lady. Tenten stomped her foot. I'm sorry but we're going to have to cut our lesson short, said Tenten. Oh okay, said Naruto. A playful smile crossed Tenten's lips. But until then, she gave him a small peck on the cheek before running off. See you later, Naruto. He placed his hand on his cheek and slowly walked away. Told you she liked you, said Alu. I honestly didn't see that coming. Hanabi walked down the street with her big sister's words still in her head. Today's idiot may be tomorrow's Hokage. She turned a corner only to be hit by a ball in the back of her head. Sorry about that, called a voice. Three children ran over to her. They were known as Undu, Konohamaru, and Moegi. Sorry. You just kind of popped up out of nowhere, said Konohamaru. Honestly, you need to watch where you're throwing the ball, said Moegi. Yeah, well, I've had a lot on my mind lately, it was true, his grandfather had been acting kind of odd lately. Truth was that Konohamaru was starting to grow worried. Who's your grandfather? asked Hanabi. Curiosity had gotten the better of her, she just simply wished to know who his grandfather was and then she'd be on her way. He's the Hokage said Konohamaru. Zero to zero, um anyways, you want to play with us? asked Konohamaru. Play? Yeah you know, Konohamaru bounced the ball off her face once. Play. Hanabi repressed her anger for the moment. I come I don't know. Father always says that there isn't time for games, said Hanabi. You can play with us if you want, said Konohamaru. Why you would let me? You don't think I'm being a jerk? asked Hanabi. Most children her age did often call her a jerk for one reason or another. Konohamaru scratched his head for a moment. Um let me put it this way, if you want friends you have to be a friend, and I just think you deserve a fair shot that's all, said Konohamaru. Hanabi just stared at Konohamaru for a moment before her eyes started shining like stars. Of course to the others it looked like she had become furious. After a little incident with Sakura the three had kind of been a little paranoid about angry women. Run for it! shouted Undu. The Konohamaru Corps ran as fast as their little legs could carry them. She's still gaining on us! shouted Moegi. Konohamaru couldn't help but smile as they came to a three way fork in the road. Split up! said Konohamaru. The three ran down the different paths but Hanabi kept on Konohamaru. The grandson of the third Hokage quickly down into another alley only to find it a dead end. Oh no! He turned around only to see Hanabi at the other end. What is it you want from me? asked Konohamaru. Hanabi nodded to herself as if finally come to a decision. It's settled, from this moment forward you're going to be my boyfriend, said Hanabi. The confused boy merely looked at the Hyuga with a perplexed expression. Huh. Naruto yawned as he opened the door. Kin, I'm home, called Naruto. Naruto-sama, shouted Kin. In a short time Naruto found himself in the presence of a bowing woman. Kin, I thought we talked about this. No bowing until I'm Hokage, said Naruto. But Naruto-sama, and stop calling me that. At the moment it's just Naruto. But Naruto-sama, enough. Now moving on, catch, said Naruto. Kin caught a small little toad light that Naruto had tossed to her. It's a night light. This way you don't have to be afraid of the dark and come into my room for safety, said Naruto. A lustful smile crossed her face. Why are you looking at me like that? asked Naruto. Glomp. Oh but what if I wanted to come into your room for another reason? She whispered into his ear, Naruto-sama. Naruto was getting redder and redder by the second. Somehow he had managed to slip out of her grasp and was making a run for the stairs. Well would you look at the time? It's time for bed. Bye. 
Kin didn't think anyone could have run up those stairs at such a speed but somehow Naruto managed to do just that. Oh well I could always, and I'm locking the door, shouted Naruto. Kin snapped her fingers. Ah nuts. Omake Tamari was giving herself a nice cleaning in the hot springs. This was exactly what she needed to keep her mind off of a certain someone, not that she would ever admit it to anyone. Five pronged seal R E A L E S E. Something sent rocketing into the air, over the bamboo wall, and into the spring. A head popped up out of the water. This head belonged to the very boy she was trying to get mind off of. Stupid arrow senin. You. Naruto turned around to see Tamari as naked as the day she was born. She grabbed him roughly by his collar, bringing him face to face with the sand nin. You little pervert. You were trying to sneak a peek at me, weren't you? No. I wasn't I swear. Don't you lie to me. You wanted to see me naked so you peeped. No I didn't. I swear on my love of ramen I wasn't trying to see you naked. Well why not? Shouted Tamari. Naruto blinked in confusion. Excuse me. What? Is my body not good enough for you? Demanded Tamari. I, you, body, naked, want, huh? To be continued. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next part.